Good evening and welcome to the Hate Bit Podcast. And now we switch to Alpha Omega Sin. Man, I, I was gonna say, dude, your fucking snapping was not was not good. Uh, I assure you that none of us are being poorly translated by some motherfucker that probably got taken in a back alley and bludgeoned to death after presentation. So, uh, yes. So let's switch to Razor Fist. <laughs> I, I confess, ladies and gentlemen, I am the person who spiked the translator's drink with horse tranquilizers. <laughs> God fucking speed, everyone. <laughs> that thing was it's, so fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, guys, you uh, you know, we're, we're uh, gonna do the, uh, the 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 podcast thing. Uh, oh no! Thing. Okay, One, let, let me let me fix that for you because you didn't stutter <laughs> and mumble enough. You actually got through a sentence. <laughs> Calm the fuck down. You're giving this dude a lot of credit. <laughs> Hold your horses. Hold your horses. <laughs> so, so uh, I, I think it's safe to say that uh, we need to go and bludgeon the Nintendo Switch presentation with our cocks because there's so much to talk about. <laughs> Is our, well, fuck. Don't bludgeon it too hard. They'll make it a peripheral. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the HD rumble is really working now. <laughs> sell it for the ice cubes I can feel in this. So it'll hey, be anything, anything they can sell a replacement for for ninety fucking dollars. I, I just want to point out the future of porn. I I really want to point out that I I feel as though anytime that people are doing some kind of search results for Joy-Con are going to be coming up with a lot of different things. Most of which are going to end up being r like rabbit vibrators and other ones that may possibly have to do with Nintendo peripherals. Either way, piss poor fucking name. Anyway, um, y'all chaos. T take it away before I just continue to talk about sex. Sure, absolutely. Welcome to the Hate Bit Podcast. In no way affiliated with Nintendo of Europe, Nintendo of America, Nintendo of Japan, Nintendo anywhere. Uh, because, you know, as you can see, we have a much better budget. And uh, clear, <laughs> clearly a planning staff. So, you know, you, you can take that and you can rest assured that this program will be at least as good as a Nintendo Switch presentation from here on out. A, a far less impressive laser light show, though. That's, th yeah, that is true. Uh, we did not start off with the laser light show. I apologize. I, I left all of the laser pointers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if it makes you feel better, yes, yes. Next week, laser pointers, highlighter markers, and fucking really boring music. Okay? <laughs> okay, we'll do that. We'll do that whole thing. But welcome to the program. You already met Alpha Omega Sin and Razor Fist, so we won't put you through that once more. And we won't put you through any more of this, this, the, the snapping and the switching. I don't understand how snapping has to do with switching. I, I've... I've yet to figure that out. Maybe maybe, it, maybe they really wanted it. To, maybe it wasn't a reveal. Maybe it was just a really elaborate poetry slam. <laughs> I know it wasn't because most deaf wasn't there. That's how I know. <laughs> but anyway, folks, I want to remind each and every one of you before we get on with the program to make sure and check out myself, Alpha Omega Sin, and Razor Fist on the social media, on Twitter, on the Facebook, on the Instagram, so you can see what color I paint my toes. You can see Alpha Omega Sin's pussy. And all sorts of things right there on the social media. So don't forget it. Um, I guess we'll uh, do the thing that's uh, most popular, been in the chat for hours and hours and hours now, the Nintendo Switch presentation. The Nintendo Switch presentation on Thursday last week, Thursday, January the 12th, starting at 8 p.m. with, uh, as you heard, uh, lots of fog. Lots of fog. It was almost like a Nintendo 64 celebration. There was so much fog. <laughs> and lasers and, and, and so on. And uh, it was really interesting, the opening of the program, because they had a DJ, and I thought about this. Like, I enjoy electronic music, but I would never pay money to stand around and hear that. <laughs> so I don't know why, how, like, they thought, like, a bunch of... Because you'd expect to see young people and you know, dancing around and doing their thing. There was a bunch of fucking 60-year-old Japanese businessmen sitting there like, fucking this. They are not fucking impressed. They want their goddamn money, and they want it fucking right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's... You know, and, they're, and they're Japanese men. They're in their 50s and 60s. You know, these are probably Dokken fans. <laughs> I'm not even kidding! No, no and, and probably, fans of, probably fans of Roudness. Of roundness, yes. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, and, and 
I would have been happier if they had like some kind of elaborate orchestra going, just because that fits a lot of Nintendo soundtracks, truth be told. You can take anything from the Super Mario or Legend of Zelda catalog. Boom, there you go. That had been better. Yeah, just, just don't let Shigeru Miyamoto play a virtual saxophone with a motion <laughs> controller. <laughs> just pull that out of it. With, with his little Joy-Con just pointing it. You you, you're never going to let that go, are you? Never, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Jesus. Five years running. Hey, Shigeru Miyamoto, well, I understand. You know, like <laughs> understand. <laughs> well, only now he gets to wrap his arms in a deformed muscular dystrophy claw around the fucking Joy-Con while he does it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's that's one thing that I've been trying to point out. People are like, yeah, but you can use them as individual controllers. I'm like, have you seen them? I have know! You what are you, you, you might as well perform open heart surgery on a dust mite. What Dude, the fuck? Like, I've seen sugar wafers that were bigger and thicker than those fucking things. Fair enough. This, this, this might give away, you know, some of my previous history, but they look just like the Milano cookies from Pepperidge Farm. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know... I just thought I'd share that, but I, but dude, they're they're like this when they're playing, and they have much tinier hands. Like if I put my mitts over one of those fucking things, it, it's gone. Like the the when it's all just one regular control, that's just fucking fine. When they bust out to like no, just stop stop all the fucking shenanigans. Quit that. It, it, it's not working. Don't do that. No, no. <laughs> they didn't help their case by ending that whole segment where they're like, you could use it singly by saying, and it feels so natural. <laughs> like, <what> the- <laughs> We're watching his arm twist yeah. into like a Vulcan mind meld grip. And it's like, dude, it they, so they have like, they, they, they have medics on staff to crack their fucking hands back <laughs> into place and then shuffle them back on the stage. You're good to go. Like, oh, oh, it's funny. Know, fucking- it's funny though because I am hearing from people who have had hands-on time with it that it is more comfortable than you would think. So I'm look, I'm open to being proven wrong on this. Yeah, I, I well, I can say the same thing. The Nintendo 2DS looked like a fucking hunk of shit, a goddamn doorstop, but it actually worked. I can say that. I do have some hands-on experience with it. But let's not jump too far ahead into the program because uh, the program opened in a very unexpected way, as we talked about, lots of lots of young people dance music and lots of old people in suits who did not look pleased, uh, or at least they didn't look like they were there to rave. They they uh, they uh, they were sitting uh, very 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 calmly, and we opened up. And I thought to myself, I was sitting there with my with my wife, and uh, I thought, how are they going to open this? Because there's a number of ways they could have done it. There could have been a movie, there could have been something from Mario. And I thought to myself, there's no way they're going to put that bald, fat fuck Kimishima in front of everybody because he he has no sense of humor. For those of you who are old enough to have seen Gung Ho with Michael Keaton, the story where a Japanese <laughs> firm takes over an American auto yes. plant and there's this and the tight ass president of the company, that's Kimishima. He just he looks like he is just like like if you say something wrong, he's going to get into a sumo pose. And charge at you. There's he's nothing. A, he's the kind of Japanese gentleman that the noise oh, was invented for, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And he's, I said, there's no way they're going to put this bald fat fuck in front of this new, revived, youthful Nintendo that's going to take on whatever the hell the future brings. And sure enough, there's a fucking spotlight and his head shines. There's fucking Kimishima right there in front of the whole... Now, I didn't recognize and I didn't realize that they were going to do this live, worldwide. I thought that they were going to break it down. Japan will have their own. Europe, Europe, and I thought they were going to do them... You know, everyone would get their own and just be at the same time. Yeah. But they're doing this live, fucking simulcast. Academy Awards Live. And they start in with Kimishima <laughs> saying something or other about the future of Nintendo, which later leads into more talk about how apparently they're going to mix all of their mistakes of the past into one box and Nintendo well, that Switch. Was, that wasn't until Harry Potter McMom jeans came out. <laughs> the, the guy, Kimishima, was like the bearer of bad news of the night, right? Like and he he's opening with- this show. 
<laughs> he opens the show with bad news. Hey, we're going to charge for online. And now... <laughs> Now let's switch. <laughs> and and you know and the thing was the, the the thing with the switch and the this the snap of the fingers uh, we talked about before we came on the air is that it worked the very first time like they had tight editing once yeah. and then every other time from that it was like a fucking Godzilla movie just yeah yeah, yeah. Was to like something the, the first time he was like and now to Japanese Janet Reno. And it worked like a, on a dime immediately. After that, it was like, and he stood there. And they, a lot of it was really embarrassing because a lot of times, like, the lights wouldn't even go out on them quick enough. And yeah. so the camera would begin to pan away and you can still see him. <laughs> well, and then, you know, shining on fucking Kimishima's bald spot looks like a close encounter of the third kind, you know. So it's just, it's, I, I wasn't sure what they were trying to sell us. But um, I, I was, I was, I was open. I was open. I want, I wanted to. I mean, you know, they, of course, they start the whole thing off with the bad news of the online. It's like, well, we're sorry, we're going to have to charge you money, and <laughs> and, and they open up with the price, which I thought was interesting to 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 bring that new. I mean, you know, it's, it's in true Japanese fashion here, let's get the unpleasantness out of the way. Yeah, and. Um, I think, and, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I think that if Satoru Iwata were still alive, he could have presented this bad news in a much friendly way. Because it's one thing to bring bad news at the front. It's another to do it as, as though you are telling someone that their child has just passed away. <laughs> well, and that's what the whole thing felt like. It's like, we have a new machine. We're so sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't help when, you, you know, the guy delivering the news has the charisma of an expired jar of mayonnaise, you oh. know, and he's just like, forgiveness, please. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, oh, well, okay, with with the price point that they had said, what did you guys think of it being 299 US dollars? <laughs> I think that was absolutely predictable. I'm not going to say it was... I don't think it's a good price. I don't think it's a bad price. No, However, I, I think, have you seen what these fucking peripherals cost? Yeah, I'm... You know, when when your replacement controllers cost 80 bucks a pop, uh, I, that's, I think that's actually a pretty good price point. People are giving me shit on my video because I said it was a pretty reasonable price point, and it is. It's 300 Look, anything... You get up into 400 territory, then we're talking about, oh my god, this is a this is a bomb, right? But if it's 200, 250, then they're taking a pretty huge loss on the console. I'm not even sure if they're not taking a loss on it now, because you look at they got a fucking detachable screen, they got mm -hmm. HD rumble on these fucking things. I mean, these controllers are not just controllers, you know what I mean? Like they're fucking they, these things. You launch them into orbit, they could be fucking satellites. They I just have everything. a feeling they're gonna find their. I just have this feeling that they're they're so small they're gonna find their way into a garbage disposal. I just have this feeling. <laughs> they're they're so tiny. They're gonna find their way into a lot of things. And I think Nintendo. Would oh have dear, we don't we we can't even talk about that. This is a family program of all the places. <laughs> what do you think the HD Rumble is for? Oh dear. The the, <laughs> go the along with the VR head? like the three hundred dollar price point. I was expecting that, but man. The downside to that is no matter what, even if everybody is going to just keep on repeating the whole same song and dance of they're not competing with Sony or Microsoft. Well, it's video games. So no matter what you are, yeah. whenever you think about the competition being $50 cheaper than you, Oof. that's the problem right there. And already established <clears throat> for several years with libraries that span fucking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games now and yeah. with just shit tons more coming out and then you're coming out at fifty dollars more granted new experience new games nintendo games mind you because that's the main reason most people are picking up so so yeah we got that but you still got to just tell somebody that when they're trying to make up their mind huh what do i want the new system that can't play wii u games or wii games or gamecube games and it's fifty dollars more, or that system that's fifty dollars less, and technically more powerful with shit tons more games. Oh, and ones that are packed in. Yeah, that's that's the. Well, the... I, we're not sure. I do think. I suspect. I don't know if this is going to be the case, but I suspect one, two, three switch is going to be packed in. That seems like the Wii Play. Oh no, it's separate thing. 
Like it's, is it's it? separate. Yeah, and it that's is not that packed it. in. And as as uh, right before you got here, uh, Alpha Omega Sin and myself were talking about, it. and this is something that we we had a moment where we you know you, we were inside each other's brains, and I said one two switch has no fucking business on a retail shelf. Yeah. Period. No, okay, that's if a you want to do this, game. If you want to do that Nintendo Select shit after you sold a million of them, which you snuck in through the system, you know, then that's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But and it's sixty goddamn dollars, the same price as Breath of the Wild. <laughs> it, it, here, it, what gets worse about it is Nintendo is selling on is selling you on a a new experience. Yeah, and that's what they're about. Okay, fine, but. We the we did really well because the pack in game with it is a the main reason why a lot of non gamers want to go and pick it up, and even just core gamers. Yes, I'm sorry that I have to go and sit there and fucking like put them in their own categories, but yeah. everybody gets what the fuck I mean. But that's people had a lot of fun with that, and it sold you on what was so fucking new. Cool. Yeah. Well, one two switch looks fucking retarded as a standalone game. But as a pack-in game, this lets me understand and experience all the different shit that this system could potentially do. Without it, do you think anybody's going to pay $60 and that, dollars for that? And no. that was that was half the problem. Are you guys with me on this? When you've got a console, like, I, okay, I get that they're trying to do a lot of new things. I like that they're innovating in a number of ways, and I'm not bashing them for that. But... When you have to devote a quarter of the two-hour runtime of your event to explaining the mere act of playing video games on your console, you know what I mean? You, oh, you, you have this mode that you can play it in, and you have to do this, and if you get this peripheral, then you can do this with it. And you can, They spent a good 30, almost 40 minutes just explaining how you play games on this goddamn thing. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because it does, as, as I talked about, and I, I knew this right away watching the program, they were sh immediately shooting for people who are from their mid-20s on to their late 30s. They yeah. want to sell it to those people because those people will let their kids play it, and then that's where the demand from the software will come from. That they're, doing, they're hitting squarely on people who were, you know, little kids in 1996 when the Nintendo 64 was, you know, was hot and popping, for, which for that very brief period when it was hot and popping. Um, and then there's Ocarina of Time, which is the greatest game of all time. If you didn't know that, then you're a motherfucker. <laughs> Jorah's uh, mask, god damn it. Um, so, but that's something that that's you know that struck me right away, and it's very much like. And some of you may remember this, some of you may not. But when I was a kid, there were a few toy lines when they came up. One was called Dino Riders, which we talked about on this program before, and I remember specifically that it came with a VHS cassette of a episode of the television show which of course was full of a whole bunch of other fucking toys that are you know going to be sold sold later and then after that there was a segment telling me how to when to where to buy dino riders toys at your local kb toys or toys r us or whatever or fao schwartz or whatever the case might be this very much felt like this when we have this peripheral and it'll make you feel great and we have this and it'll do that it's, it's just felt like it was like a home shopping network. We were getting this thing piece by piece by piece by piece. Now, if they were showing me how this was going to work in a game, I understand that. But I've never, ever bought a game saying, you know, I would love to swizzle around ice cubes in a glass. That's what I would love to spend money on so I could have ice cubes in a glass. I don't... I. I like the HD rumble because of the applications that you can get. Like, okay... You're playing Breath of the Wild. I don't know that this is going to be an actual feature. I don't know that this is in the game. But say you're playing Breath of the Wild and you've got your Hyrulean shield and uh, Stalfo hits you on the shield. You could theoretically st simulate the sensation of being hit on the shield with Good. the fucking rumble. Sure. It could, you could actually simulate that. And that's really fucking cool. It's kind of an extension of what they do already on... Like the new iPhones and stuff, where mm. you kind of have virtual buttons with the rum the rumbles kind of simulate virtual buttons on your yeah. touch screen and so forth. It's like the lot the next logical extension of that. Again, Nintendo's innovating here in a number of ways. I don't want to discount that because that is really important. 
Mm -hmm. And but see what you just told me. How hard would it have been for them to mock up a quick little movie of that happening? That's that a good would have point. sold the fucking thing far yeah. more than cubes in a glass. Exactly. <laughs> That's the problem with the system is it's going to boil down to a lot of marketing. And even then, the marketing is going to come at the expense of potential convincing. Because Well, you here, here's, I think what they're hoping for is since they're kind of hardware wise, we're probably looking at a mildly souped up Wii U, right? So it, I think they're going the Wii route again with old hardware, new gimmicks, stuff on top of it that's more interesting. Sure. And so what sold the Wii? Word of mouth. Right, it was everybody who was like playing the Wii. Oh, well, I'm sure the Ellen playing. show helped a little. Well, that too. Yeah, you got all that free press, and you know that's going to happen too. It's going to be on the Fallon show. It's going to be on it's all. It's already this been on the Fallon show. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're. It's going to be on Conan. It's going to be on all those shows. Um, so they're they're hoping word word of mouth is going to sell this damn thing, and we'll see if it pays off. I think. There seems to be more hype around this console for sure than Wii U, because oh, Wii definitely. U, because Wii, Wii U had this really confused launch. I said in my in my video the pro one of the problems the Wii U had was you know it was called the Wii U number one, so people weren't sure if it was an expansion, but number two, it came out in 2012, which was this awkward kind of DMZ between the last generation and this one, so you weren't sure. Okay, is it kind of the last gasp? of the previous generation or is it the vanguard of the forthcoming one and it kind of was never fish nor foul it was it was just there it, it was right in the middle and that was that hurt the console so it'll be interesting to see how the the nintendo switch operates in terms of this well it's what's interesting and we talk about you know you can draw the parallels and the lines the, the wii u it's obviously there there are connections for one reason and and as as we talked about this whole thing seemed to begin with it was a funeral for the wii u hopefully bridging into rebirth with this new thing which is definitely something different but what's interesting is the wii u was a system fraught with with gimmicks uh and when i say gimmicks i mean peripherals you know that they didn't bring to the forefront like you had to buy the game and then it fucking told you that you could you need to use this you needed to use that games that required the wii mote and all that stuff so that was kind of came in through the back door you know you found out about this later Whereas this was right up front. They're going to sell you this. And here's the problem. They're not selling you one thing. They're selling you a whole bunch of little things. They're selling you this and this and this and this and this and this. And that was, I mean, for, for people like us who are used to taking in this information on a regular basis, that's one thing. For the average consumer, this is a lot to take in. And yeah. I was I was pretty tired, and then they got to the games like, oh fuck, that's right, there's games for this thing. Yeah, yeah, like just, shit. Um, Alpha, Alpha used to work at GameStop. Did you work at GameStop like around the uh, when the Wii was out, the original Wii? Uh, I was I was there when GameCube and Xbox were new. Oh, okay. So I worked I worked at GameStop briefly while the Wii was out. I remember just just for a good kind of. Uh, a, a good parallel here when the Wii was out people would ask for a new controller and it was like a 25 to 30 minute process to explain to them that the cheapest way to get a new Wii controller was get Wii Play mm -hmm. there was this whole fucking verbose rigmarole you had to go th you wound up getting it down to a science where you yeah. explain, you literally had like a routine you would fucking throw at him because it was well, like, hey, the cheapest way to get this goddamn <clears throat> controller is to get a free game with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Imagine that, but times like fucking ten. Oh no, it's it's gonna be bad. I've I've tried to explain this to people because even when I wasn't uh, working at a game store, I was still technically selling people stuff because I I know lots of people, and when I'm in a store, I'm a nebby fucking bastard. So. I've 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 even been called in to work at game stores that I technically wasn't employed in, but luckily it was they paid me in games. Fuck it. <laughs> Try to explain to people about the different versions of PlayStation 3s and Xbox 360s oh God. just because oh, the hard drives were different sizes. <laughs> that was was an, uh, like an undertaking that I don't wish upon even my biggest enemies. Oh, but, 
with this and and keep in mind and i right now we're in 2017 we still still four years removed still have people that don't know that the wii u is a console that's right. true they think that it is a controller for the nintendo wii right now because nintendo fucked up oh, with yeah. with the switch the worst case scenario is people are not going to know if it is a console or a handheld. And this is what's going to happen. Well, what about that Nintendo Switch? Well, what's that? Oh, it's the new Nintendo console. It is? Well, is it a 3DS? No, it's... Well, I mean, it's not a, a portable, but but you can take it on the go. So it's, so it's not a handheld? Well, can I play it at home? Well, yeah, you can. So you put it inside of this. Well, well what do you mean I put it inside that? What... Where is the control? Well, it can be a controller. What do you mean it can yeah. be a controller? It's going to be fucking nightmarish. <laughs> to explain <laughs> it might unless unless the word of mouth compensates for it. Unless you have because look uh, before you how think about it before the Wii came out. Oh, you have to hold this thing and this thing in order to and one of them waggles and and you can kind of use it as a controller too oh but there's a pro controller too if you want to use that as sort of a, a more normal controller and you have to have the little strip up and you know that was a bit of a nightmare too initially there was a little bit of a hurdle i like i said i think they're counting on that word of mouth and i think to to jete back into positiveville for a moment i think they have a better chance of getting positive word of mouth with a console where there's a clear line of demarcation. I say, worst case scenario, you at least have a console that people know is the new Nintendo console, because it's called the Switch. It has a totally new name. There's no confusing it with the Wii or the Wii U. There's a totally different brand there. Even if it winds up not doing as well, I think it will do better than the Wii U, because oh, no, it's got that's, its own. It, it has to. It I can't can. do worse. It, that's impossible. Yeah, I mean, right uh, now. Well, here's here's the thing that's bothering me, Nintendo of America. How many Wii U commercials did you ever see in your fucking life? <laughs> <laughs> I still remember. I still remember the the one, the first one, where it looked like like all those people were playing Wii U in those giant fucking packing crates or whatever the fuck those were. It was like Hollywood Squares with the neon lights. I didn't see that one. That was, the, that was the only one I ever saw. And I the think one I saw was with the family in their pajamas and doing this on Mario Kart. And the system had been out for like three fucking years. And that was the first commercial I ever saw. Now, to put this into perspective, they sold a lot of Wii's. They yeah. sold a lot of Wii's. They're sitting on like $6 billion. They could have bought a whole fucking TV network <laughs> and put on all Wii U all the time. And they would still have like four billion dollars left yeah and what they do they put out the fucking commercial that i never saw now and you know and i had to see this shit on the fucking disney channel <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean i had to be the one time that i'm in a fucking room with the disney channels on holy shit i got well, i bought that thing three fucking years ago but you know good on you for telling folks <laughs> for the first time ever for the first time in three goddamn let's, years okay let's talk speaking of which let's talk about the launch date because that's the fucking that's the most unconventional thing in my opinion about the well console. that's the, they launched the 3ds in march as well well but that's a handheld that's a little different no no I, I gather and we're well, talking a thing. major a, a major console in march well, so here's the major problem is i think they think that we believe this is a real home console portable hybrid it is not this is a home console you can take with you, yeah. much like the Wii U. If you, you know, if you have fucked around enough and you know knew the hacks to make it happen, this is a home console you can take with you. This is not this. This does not, to me, in any way, speak. This is not the new Game Boy. This yeah. this thing was not designed from the ground up as something you're going to take with you. That is an added feature. It looks entirely too fragile. I mean, am I am I missing something? Well, that's 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 one of the the problems with the system right now, and I'm still coming across people that are they're they're confused by it. Is it a console or is it a handheld? I keep saying both. Well, I okay, I consider handheld its own market, but I'm like it's a portable console. I kind of view it as 
the PS1. The PS1 yeah. was cool because you slap the fucking screen on it, that bitch could go somewhere. I was like, that's kind of badass. This is the the Nintendo Switch is what they wanted the Wii U to be, but financially it would have dug them an early fucking grave. So screw all that shit. That's yeah. what the Switch is to me. I think it's an awesome idea. It just it's hard to try to explain to people because when I'm like, hey, it's it's a tablet. But with controllers on it, they'll be like, "Well, what? Like an iPad?" And like, no. Well, it's like it's like a screen, but it's there's it's so fucking confusing to explain. But still, the fact that it's coming out when it is, in some ways, is good because they have no competition whatsoever. Yes. The downside is they just missed everything with the holiday season, so that kind of sucks. But and totally dropped the fucking ball on. Yeah, never mind. Go on. It, I mean, but now you figured there's a dry spell that happens in summer. Yeah. Nintendo could technically fill an entire void by just picking up all that slack and be like, That's... we own this shit. We fucking own this. And yeah. they could do that. That's assuming because right now, as many people have said, they don't have much of a launch lineup, which I'll always go and say, well, the Nintendo 64 launched with two games. That doesn't make up for anything. Nintendo but, 3DS launched with like five games, and one of them was fucking Pilot Wings. Yeah, it, look, the the launch lineup. I wish that it had something that was like I wish the Mario Odyssey was exclusively a launch game. That would have been fucking badass. But regardless, it's still that's going their. To I think honestly, I think that game's just about done. They're probably holding that in reserve for the holiday. They they want first they want something big to show at E three. I think they have stuff to show now, but they decided not to show really anything outside of that little trailer, uh, because otherwise they're gonna have jack shit to show at E three, and they want something well, big in reserve for the holiday. So that's what Mario Odyssey is for. And I'll, I'll say this in defense of their launch lineup: What console can you think of that launched with a bigger game than Zelda? I mean, that's a fucking right. huge deal. That's huge. Most most of the time, a console doesn't wind up with a game as big as Zelda or even almost as big as Zelda till a year later at most, or at the earliest, rather. You know, you look at the PS2, all the biggest games didn't come out till 2001. You know, you look at the uh, the 360, all the biggest games didn't come out till 2007. You say the same thing of the PS3, as a matter of fact. Okay. Yes, games, game, all the really good killer apps tend to take a year at well, the earliest to come out. And this awesome. this console's getting its killer app out of the gate. I think that's a point in its favor any way you slice it. And I, I would add also the launch, the launch window. I think the foremost advantage of it is, look, it's been kind of a slow news cycle in gaming lately yes. and it's january right now it only gets slower from here in the middle of the year basically nintendo has guaranteed now for the next seven months until holiday season pretty much all the gaming headlines are going to be about them mm -hmm. so, and you know what when when we first started this and we all got into the fucking chat it was just like I don't know what else is going on other than Nintendo shit because I'm literally drowning in it. Yeah. Because N Nintendo right now, because of the timing of everything, I mean, every, all game companies blow their load in the fall. Yeah. And then they take time to recuperate. That's not to say that there is, like, no releases coming out whatsoever. But, I mean, a lot of the heavy hitters are done for a while, and then we get shit trickled out. Nintendo gets to come out and just have at it. Yeah. All by them, by their lonesome. That's completely fine. And but they get to be the kings of summertime with Splatoon. The the only thing about it that sucks is they are now several years into a console life cycle that they're already ending in as well. Yeah, and that's where shit's fucked up. And it, it's something that I don't think most folks out there even honestly understand or think about, but. The day and age of console life cycles is dead. Yeah, like it's fucking dead. Well, look, I mean, look, it's 2017 now. We've already got updated hardware for the last consoles already. 
Already. Yeah, and, already. And those or, fucking or things actually, launched in what? Late 2013, 2014? Like, they're, they're fucking three years old, guys. They're fucking three years old, and they're already updating them. I think we're going to have shorter console life cycles from here well, on. We out. also have the Scorpio coming out this year. I also, yeah. I also predict we're going to have more studios closing, but I think that's a natural. Oh, well, yeah. But, yeah. But with with the time frame of it, I don't think it's all that bad because they have time literally just to themselves. Yeah. Um, back to the earlier point of, of the price, I I know that they're probably taking a hit at three hundred. I, I mean, knowing Nintendo, they are they are turning a profit because they are all about turning a profit on day one. And I can honestly say one hundred percent that they've cut corners with the system, which we'll definitely get to uh, later on. But if they would have launched at two fifty, I think that they would have done themselves a lot better. Granted, they probably would be breaking even, not taking a loss, but breaking even. And Nintendo's not about that. They've always been savvy enough to always turn a profit. But it's just I, I, three hundred. I still think is a comfortable price point. I had a lot of people yeah. argue with me about that, but I'm like three hundred is. If think about inflation and compare it to like when the Neo Geo came out. How much was that? Like like six six hundred and ninety nine dollars. Yeah. <laughs> well, not only that, but could compare it to a more modern console or compare it even to a console like two generations removed. Like what was they, they had the two models of the three sixty. There was the one without the hard drive for two hundred, and then there was the one or, or was it was it the one without the hard drive was three hundred and the one with the hard drive was four hundred. I can't remember. But it was there was a hundred dollar difference between the two. It was about that same range. And comparatively the hardware was, you know, higher or whatever. But you know, adjusting obviously for the technological progression of the of the recent years. Switch, we're still kind of not sure about the hardware. I think that is still the big question mark. The fact that they didn't brag about it tells me it's probably just a souped up Wii U. Well, with the hardware, looking at, um, there's tactical specs floating around out there. And from everything I've seen, like actual games and see them up and running and all the other shit. Uh, and the fact that it's running Unreal Engine 4, yeah. which is a good thing because that means that they can technically get a lot of uh, third-party games out there that will be on the competing consoles and also be on PC. That is a very important thing that has been glossed over by folks out there. Well, it is. The Wii you know, U was getting fucked. We should mention this. We've already heard several uh, developers have come out and opined on the Nintendo Switch and said it's easy to port for. That's good yes. news. That's really good news. Yes, yeah. and that's why they're bringing a five fucking year old hack and slash game to the <laughs> Nintendo Switch for sixty fucking dollars. <laughs> well, um, they, hardware wise, I I really don't think that it's, it's like it. It's going to be less powerful than a Wii U. Everything that I'm seeing so far, it's above a Wii U, but obviously below an Xbox One. So yeah. it's just straight in the middle, wherever the fuck you could go and call that. So we could say low-end X-Bone, and that's that's what the Switch is. But it's portable, so that's pretty fucking bitching in it, a lot of ways. It is, but again, you wind up with the other problem the Wii U had, which was, you know, if you recall, they were very vigilant in this press conference to bring out every third party under the yellow sun. You know, they even, <laughs> they, they even had the guy from Sega come out just to say, oh, we're working on stuff. He didn't, yeah, that, he didn't, that's even, all sh yeah. <laughs> he didn't even show any stuff. And he wasn't the only one. There were several people who came out and were like, oh, yeah, we'll have a FIFA game. You can't see any of it, but yeah, we'll, we'll have, have a FIFA game. That's That's been one of the things Nintendo has struggled with since Nintendo 64 going forward is trying to convince third-party companies to keep games on their systems. And that's... And, that's... and that's that's what I was trying to get to. The problem is the hardware. Look, I'm not a graphics geek. This isn't about graphics. It's about portability. And, and by that, I mean the ability to port to the console. And so we're talking about a, a console that is behind the other systems. So how the fuck do you port... A modern AAA experience. How, how do you port Battlefield 1? And I'm sure it'll be on the damn thing, but they're going to have to downgrade it quite a bit. Well, you know, they're going to have to have downgraded versions considering how many fucking versions are there of the Xbox One, and there's going to be the Scorpio, and there's going to be all these same games. 
I think the matter of there being different games of different quality, I think that's something we they should be used to by now. Because if you, you want to attack an audience, this is how it's going to have to be done. Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. I mean, while that's true, I you got to also look at a publisher is going to sit down and they have X amount of dollars that they're willing to shell out to a developer to make games X, Y, and Z. So games X, Y, and Z are being made right now. They get to look at the platforms that they have available to them and the cost to produce those games for those platforms. Now, when they go and look at the Nintendo platform, which isn't up to snuff, with PC, PS4, Xbox One, which all can be right around the same exact fucking whatever. Yeah. Then you look at the Switch. Well, that, that takes a bit of a dive. It okay, is. well, it, it'll be easy to port for. You were still paying for the license. You were still paying for the development kit. You have to have a development team who knows how to work on it. And now, do you know whether or not you were going to turn a profit on that system? And is it worth, you know, potentially downgrading the AAA experience to a double A experience? Yeah. Maybe it's anonymous. I don't know. Here's what here's what tipped me off. Here's what tipped me off that it's kind of a souped up Wii U. You have Bethesda come out there. You have our Lord and Savior, Todd Howard, right? And he gets uh, he gets up there and he's like, "Hey guys, I still haven't had my eyeballs surgically straightened the fuck out." Um, yo, uh, we're gonna bring Skyrim to the console. All right, what Bethesda games that sold tens of millions of copies have come out since Skyrim? Little thing called Fallout Four, anyone? Little thing called Doom, anyone? You could port those over to the Wii U if it could handle it. Uh, you know what I mean? It's if the Nintendo Switch isn't going to get a Fallout 4 port, I, it probably can't handle even current gen games without a severe downgrade. And that is a little worrisome because I think that will hurt the third party support any way you slice it. Because well, also, uh, this could be Bethesda dipping their toe into Nintendo Switch. Why sully the name of Fallout, which has done so well for them? Here's this game that. If it doesn't do so well, it won't hurt them reputation-wise. I mean, if if I was them, I would. If I was Nintendo working with Bethesda, and I think I'm just going to point out the fucking obvious. I think it's really odd that it took them this long to say, "Yeah, that thing that we showed in the promotional package is actually being made officially now." <laughs> Are you fucking retarded? Like, <laughs> anyway, but that being their big announcement. And despite the fact that, yes, I would very much like to go and see Fallout 4 on there, well, why don't you just go and say, hey, you know what we did miss out on? We did miss out all out on Fallout 3 and on New Vegas. Could you bundle those together, amp them up quite a bit, Game of the Year editions for both of them, package that shit together and give that to us? That'd be fantastic. And despite the fact that uh, there's plenty of people out there who have already played it, and if you're like me and you've grown up with the Fallout games, you've enjoyed them all, except for you ignore the one that came out on Xbox. That one was really bad. But anyway, <laughs> this overall would have been really fucking cool. And if they were just like, oh, man, we're getting Skyrim. Uh, why don't you get the whole Elder Scrolls series? We're talking about Elder Scrolls games that never even made their way to fucking console, but this would be a first time. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I got I got the Elder Scrolls collection back there. They just fucking released for PC like a year ago or whatever. What, uh, why don't you make a console port of that only on Wii or, or only on Switch rather? God, I, it's gonna. We've had two Wii consoles back to back. It's gonna take some deep programming to get me to say Dude, Nintendo it, Switch. I I really think. It, to me, I would just start playing to certain strings. I'd be like, okay, so we can't get that? Well, what about this? I mean, it's not going to cost them a whole heck of a lot. The shit's already sitting there. They're well-recognized names. Yeah. And, and, and people could sit there like immediately bitch, well, it's just getting ports. Who the fuck cares? It's getting shit that Nintendo never had. And that's yeah. a start. Well, not only that, but shit scoop the competition. PS4 can't play PS3 or PS2 games, you know what I mean? Like, fucking get, grab some of those. Get some of those re-released by third parties, you know? Get get Dude, some there's, shit there's that you can't play on the big consoles. That would be a fucking good-ass idea, because there's plenty of exclusives that came out on there. And be like, how many of them right now have become those diamonds in the rough, those hidden gems 
and just grab them and be like, oh yeah, yeah, you can find a home here. Don't worry. Yeah, and, and make sure you know, make sure it's a third party, obviously, because first party shit, they Sony ain't gonna let that fucking happen. But you know, there are exclusives on PS3 that were made by third parties. Isn't Yakuza a third party? Yeah, you know? yeah, and they they literally they've what, what's fucked up is the Yakuza games are only on Sony, with the exception, and it's fucking Japan only. And I flip the fuck out about this. I'm still kind of pissed. Yakuza one and two came out in HD, and it was on Wii U, but we didn't get it outside Japan. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) (laughs) oh that was another interesting thing and we should mention this this is a positive thing no more fucking region locking yes that was very interesting and then they said almost nothing else about it just yes and then (laughs) shut the fuck up (laughs) no no that's that's something that they needed to do it nintendo with with the wii u they were the only company that was like yeah region locking and sony the the playstation 3 region free playstation 4 region free i was like that's fucking awesome and i say this as somebody who imports from pal regions and from japan yeah so to me that's exciting i'm like oh that's badass is is all fucking hell and they went out of their way and said that because they know for a fact people have been like why the fuck is this region locked why yeah, and well, it's been yeah. a pain in the ass. Like, it, 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 even worse because there's games that you download digitally. Oh man, guess what? That's locked to your system because Nintendo still has an employee to fucking accounts that have all the items just attached to them. Yeah. So that's burnt their asses. I'm hoping that this is where all that shit changes. Well, well yeah, but, but picture this for a moment. Sony, because of the lack of region locking, Sony, the PlayStation has by default been sort of the weeb machine. You know, because you can you can import shit from all your exotic RPGs and shit that were never brought to America. All your all your JRPGs and so forth. Your comb over games, they fucking <laughs> you know you import those on the PS4 if you're going to import them on anything. Now you got a Nintendo console that they already said is going to have a shitload of Dragon Quest games. You know, yeah. that's generally a Nintendo concern. Now you can bring those over. You can fucking. It, there's an actual challenger to Sony's de facto title of Weep Machine, basically. Mm-hmm. The, the Nihongo files are going to be gathering around this thing. Oh, dude, that was, it was something that I thought was kind of interesting was them going with that. And when, when you go out of your way to go in and say that during a big fucking press conference, it's obviously like a big deal. And in a lot of ways, it's a fucking selling point because people have gotten so used to, yeah, yeah, can't imp- because i mean pal regions they got that game in english we didn't get it in the north americas yep no 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 love for us so you got to import oh man but do you got one of the pal region systems oh you didn't import that from the uk doesn't look like you're playing it unless you go and modify your system and nintendo doesn't want that now they're finally at least taking the fucking hint but oh, okay so so we got we got that now the system itself I, I've got a, I've got a question. Did you guys also get the 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 faint idea that it seemed like he was on some kind of a hallucinogenic drug the entire time, trying to go in and talk about the HD Rumble about everything because he's in space at one point <laughs> and then he's like in the Arctic and I'm just like what it's like. Yeah, the yeah he was on, he was on Uranus and Neptune for a brief period. Yes, <laughs> dude, it, it was, was way just, out. Of the- Way out in outer space. There was it's, so it's small much. wonder. This this is why they don't do E3 presentations anymore. This, <laughs> this, this. <laughs> Dude, it, it was fucking weird, man. It there were there was a lot of them just looking at him like, what what's going on? Like what's going on? I'm not high. So I don't know <laughs> what's happening. And I'm wondering, am I fucked up? Like, like is there I don't I don't understand. And they put so much like stock into this and when they were talking about that one-two switch game, dude, the amount of effort and time that went into that dude dressed up as a cowboy and that, wah, 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 wah. it took him. I've seen the Undertaker's entrance, and I've seen that. And the Undertaker's entrance could go by five fucking times before that motherfucker was done walking before he went and he had the old shit at the rodeo corral. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, end this. 
I for thought, you know what? Ball. I got, I got a, you know, I got blue balls from it because I thought it was going to be a new wild gunman, and then no fucking deal. No tin star. No. No tin. Nope. Dude, I was hoping that it was going to be something Red Dead Redemption related. That's what I was fucking thinking. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, dude, this would be so fucking badass. And, and then like the longer it went on, I was like, no, no, this is nope. Ah. Uh, uh, mm. <laughs> and the minute that he went like this with the controller, yep, that was the end of the game. You just experienced everything it had to offer. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Let's do it again. Up, oh, no, I'm still faster than Grandpa. I'm just whipping this old sour puss's ass over and over again. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> beating this old bitch's ass over and over, except for he's got an actual 40 and could fuck you up. But... That that was one of many games. I understand that, but goddamn, they dedicated so much time to that and no payoff. Well, no, payoff. No, 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 not only that, I would say even as much time as they dedicated to it, they told us nothing about it until the next fucking day. Like you, you couldn't, you you spent all this time to tell me that you've made a game that's not a video game, and and then I got to hear about it three or four more times before I understand what the hell you know because it's a game. That is the, the what the video part is for spectating. Well, and not only that, but like, isn't does one two switch not so clearly delineate the bleeding edge wafer thin line between you know 3.5 D augmented reality and just sitting in your living room staring at your grandpa like an asshole, right? <laughs> There is there is such a thin line between that activity, ladies and gentlemen. And one two switch just sits there straddling it and teabagging it. Like that's all that's all they're well, fucking. It's, it's, doing not, all, it's not only that. It's not like you like you know what? We're tired of this imagination shit. You sit there and imagine stuff and then give us money. <laughs> yeah, is it? I, I had I had people excited when they they were like, "You don't need a screen." And I'm like. What are you doing then? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the video part? And, 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 they, and they looked at me like literally perplexed. Like, well, I'm like, it's a fucking video game. If like, I can just do that with my fucking hand. Look, finger guns, <laughs> finger guns, man. I have them right here. Finger guns. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, well, you could pay $60 and have, HD finger guns, you little bitch. <laughs> like, no, I don't need that. I don't need that at all. Like, I can just go to like some gas station bathroom and get that HD experience. Like, for fuck's sake, this, this is fucking silly. Like, just, just pack it in there and at least let me interact. I have a 65 inch fucking TV in there, and you're gonna tell me I can't fucking use it because I have HD no. finger guns? Fuck you! Yeah, no, no, you are not allowed to look at your TV. Not for these 60 fucking dollars. No, no. It just, like, I, I'd seen it so many times. Oh, and, and hold up. So, can we talk about the milking game? Did you guys see the milking <laughs> game? <laughs> Look, I just want to point out that they they had this. So imagine sitting across from me is some other unfortunate poor sap, okay? And we're facing each other like it's the $10,000 pyramid, and we're about to just fucking lose bad. So you got a screen right here, and that shit's dead fucking center, and this is all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Look, you want to know what this is called? Casting couch. It's not a fucking game. This is casting couch, motherfucker. That's no, all no, no, no. No, they're churning the butter. You just, <laughs> yeah. you just got a dirty mind. You, you know why you have a dirty mind? It's because you've been do using your imagination too much with one, two, <laughs> switch. That's why you've been staring at Grandpa too fucking long. I, I can tell you where I'm putting the fucking Joy-Con at tonight. Oh, yeah. I can wait. I can't wait for one two switch. In insert Grandpa's catheter action. <laughs> oh, we got good shit coming on. This is gonna oh, be yeah. fantastic, dude. I I had seen it. And I'm just like, it's it's a milking game. It's a fucking <laughs> milking game. You just you're giving me a milking game in HD finger hands. Just just I can't. Yeah, stop. <laughs> I tell you what, they're, they're giving you a finger and it's not that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Let's test that old prostate with the joy. Mama. 
<laughs> and, and, and seeing it, I just kept on thinking, like, look, if there's going to be any milking going on, it's probably of our wallets after a while because, I mean, just, just what the fuck. Also, the fact that there's no Harvest Moon game, but there's milking of a cow going on, that's heartbreaking to me, by the way. Fucking heartbreaking. Everybody, oh, Stardew Valley, fuck you. Harvest Moon did it first. Huh. There you go. <laughs> one, one thing I have to say, though, is for those folks that, and no matter how much we lambast this thing, there's people who are watching the program right now. They're going to go get one. They're going to buy it day fucking one. They've already fucking pre-ordered it. Some of them sit like this. I don't know who they are, but some of them already have fucking pre-orders. And <laughs> what I want all of you to do for me, though, is when you go out, if you're going to go out on day one and get yourself a Nintendo Switch, I want you to look at the games that are available. And I want you to think about the nerve of the people that put The Legend of Zelda and 1-2 Switch for the same price, and I want you to sit there at Target and laugh your dick off <laughs> that they really thought you were going to pay money for this. And, then, that, that, and then, that, will, that, that will make you feel better about throwing away your $300. And then I want you to take those two hands, make one of these, <laughs> and start milking. <laughs> Come on, everybody. It's fun. They're just Joy Cons. That's all. It's what the hip kids call it now. I but tell you, man, this is this is this is gonna make for a strange packs this year. Let me tell you. And you know what? You know what? They're making. Is it not DMA in the back of your mind? Do you not think to yourself, Nintendo fucked up just hard enough that this will be the biggest success in company history? Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, somewhere there, yeah, somewhere like on, on the Ellen show, oh, this is great! Yeah! And then fucking millions sold. I, That's for children thinking. about farm life. <laughs> it is, because you look at the Nintendo Wii on paper. I remember when that thing was about to come out, and it was a big meme on the internet before memes were even that big of a thing. And they were just like, oh, it's a GameCube with a motion controller. Oh, GameCube with a motion controller. Blah, 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 blah. You know, they're just, they, there was literally a story that came out. They were reusing leftover GameCube parts to make this <laughs> fucking console, which did not help that story. And fucking, and then it winds up selling more than God. It's just you know ridiculous. Well, they did, they did show they off. They rebuilt one. the Japanese empire off of that shit. This, this doesn't, this only says so much, but still, uh, and it just kept popping up everywhere. It's all the pre orders are sold out right now. Apparently, Nintendo is supposed to be shipping on launch. They're supposed to be shipping two million. Now, I don't know if this is like wave one of the pre-orders, which is kind of weird if they're doing pre-orders and waves. But you know, whatever. It helps build the hype machine, and that's kind of part of like you know marketing in a lot of ways, especially if you're Nintendo. But if they sell through all of their two million on day one and they all go out there and don't look at eBay because you already know they're fucking on there. Lots of them are on there. Jesus fucking Christ, are they on there? They were but, on there before the fucking presentation was over. Uh, yeah, they, no fucking joke. They no, really I'm not making a joke. Oh, oh no, that, that's that's the truth. I pulled it up on my phone. I was like, I bet these motherfuckers are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that shit was on there so fucking quick. Like, white on race. Just no fucking doubt it was going to be there. Just, huh. It, it if happened. These people, but... If those people worked as hard at their fucking regular jobs, the world would actually function. You know what I mean? It it, it would. It would. So, okay. Now, we, we've talked about 1-2 Switch numerous different times. What games would you guys like to talk about that are going to be coming I, out? I have to talk about this. I fucking blew up when I saw... One third of a second of something called Super Bomberman. Nice. Just kaboom. <laughs> Konami has been sitting on Bomberman for what? Seven goddamn years. We talked about this, I think, on one of the first episodes of the Hate Bit podcast when Hudson passed away and Konami got a hold of the Hudson properties. And now, and that's, we here we are five years later. And finally, a fucking Bomberman yeah, game. Were, were you blowing up because it's a new Bomberman or because Konami is making a video game? It was more Konami making a video game because <laughs> because when they, they showed it later in the Treehouse Live, I'm like, if this thing has a fucking slot machine in it, I'm stabbing motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> As it turns out, no slot machines yet. Now, there may be DLC, we don't know. But the <laughs> point is, fucking Bomberman game. And it looks like a pretty solid one, too. 
Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, the games that they showed, like, one nineteen billionth of a second of in the in the presentation, they had Sega come out and say, hey, there's things we're working on, guys. Later. Right? <laughs> and, yet, and yet in the final video package, you got footage of that Sonic game they're working on. And it's yeah. like, you could have showed a half a second of that! What the fuck is wrong oh, you, with you people? You could have showed him just standing there looking at his watch tapping on his foot and people would have lost their minds! Look, I, I, I need to... I feel like I'm I'm like I've been overly positive and now I'm on here and I feel like I'm overly negative about everything. <laughs> but <laughs> Super Bomberman was it Super Bomberman R? Super Bomberman R. Um that I mean like I jumped for joy. I was so fucking excited. That little fucking Hudson logo right there. I missed that. You have no idea. Uh good platformer, by the way. Pick it up if you haven't played it. But I was just like, oh man. Fucking Bomberman! Yes, 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 yeah. Oh shit! It's owned by Konami. <laughs> so then I I was at this crossroads. I'm like, but uh -oh. but this is what I've wanted. I, but you're not supposed to. I had no idea. I still have no idea. But I can't I can't give them I, like I can't put money into their fucking coffers. Those fucking sons of bitches have done so many bad things. But now they're doing it. While wearing like a leather face version of Hudson's fucking face, and they're like, <laughs> "Remember Bomberman?" I'm like, "How dare you!" But yes, I do, and I miss it. And they're like, "Oh, we got a new one." I I want this. I actually need this, and I'm horrified at the idea of buying it because Konami. I'm just expecting something bad. That's well, from what I can tell, they hired some people that I've never heard of. So there is hope. <laughs> well, I I heard that they had old Hudson employees working on That's one. what I heard, but I didn't get any confirmation of that. I, they just threw some studio names out that I had never heard of, and I don't know where those people went anyway, so I cannot confirm or deny those things. Look, uh, the idea that we're getting a Bomberman game is amazing in itself. The fact that Konami is even putting out something that is not pachinko-related, I'm kind of impressed by, but... The whole idea that it's a traditional Bomberman game. The last time that they fucked with it, it was on mobile. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play Bomberman on my fucking phone at all. Never. I just don't care to. And is this is actually going to be on a console. That shit's fucking amazing. And the whole thing of how many Nintendo Switch uh, systems can you hook up eight at a time? Is that I, it? I didn't get the data on that. I was searching for that and I couldn't find anything. I, I'm, I want to say that it's a, I'm pretty sure, but hooking up that many, if they can take that idea and combine that with Bomberman, we're on the cusp of having Saturn Bomberman all over again with the 10 player mode. Almost, that yeah. would blow my fucking mind. Well, yeah. And if we can do it on a big ass TV, which would be way better nowadays because the max we had 36 inch televisions when we were doing it on Saturn and nowadays way fucking better. And all the little controllers that snap off that are the size of the goddamn fucking sugar wafer. Yeah. You can pass a bunch of those around. Perfect. That'd be great. Granted, you'll have carpal tunnel syndrome. Like you're throwing up fucking crypt signs and shit. Oh, no, 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 that's cool. Don't you, don't you understand alpha? They, they explained this at the conference. The way that you play multiplayer is all of you spend $300 a piece on your own console and then they come <laughs> over with their tablet controllers and then the $1,800 worth of, so of <laughs> Nintendo consoles all network together to play Bomberman for an afternoon. And then and you walk out of the room and meet as strangers the rest of your fucking lives. Uh, and, and by the way, after all that happens, when everybody sits down and you go to hit start to start the match, and it'll be some cute Japanese voice, like, start match! The minute that happens, somebody's going to kick in your door and shoot all of you and rob you fucking blind. Because that's way too much shit sitting around. And they're like, these motherfuckers were playing playing Bomberman. I almost said Saturn Bomber, man. <laughs> worth, worth way fucking more, by the way. But go in there and fucking kick the doors down, take all the shit. Fucking A right, you're going to do that. Oh, it'd be amazing. That should be a commercial, by the way. <laughs> That'd be so fucking cool. I'm like, it's it's worth killing for. <laughs> I'm like, yeah! Oh, it's awesome. Oh, I'd still hate Konami, though. Get That's your shit ganked with style. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and the, now the other releases for launch day include Skyland Imaginators. Now, I thought the Skylanders, I thought they were giving up on that. That They seem like there's been a lot of pullback on that. I, uh, now, uh, Alpha, you've got some kids. Uh, to, is, that, is, is that in your realm of consciousness? Uh, okay. Uh, lame as fuck. Don't give a shit. I actually like Skylanders. I've had a lot of fun. Played it with son, nephews, and all that shit. Enjoy the game. It, it's it's literally Diablo with little overpriced figures, and that's it. Uh, Imaginators, we haven't gotten to play yet. I want to pick it up just because they had a really cool ass looking Crash Bandicoot in uh, Doctor Cortex figure. I was just like, dude, that's that's amazing. But yeah, they exist. They'll be on the Switch, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. just just checking, and then also. Uh, as you would expect, Just Dance will be available on launch Woo! day. Um, right. Now, uh, say what you want. I know there was some groaning about that. I have to say this, at least, if you've been paying any form of attention, if Just Dance is not on this machine, the machine is fucked. Because <laughs> they will put that... The coffee machine downstairs plays Just Dance. Okay? So, if there's if there's not Just Dance on your machine... You're not even getting out of the gate. I, I want to point out what's more fucked up about it is while we will groan, roll our eyes at the at just the announcement of it, like who the fuck even plays this? They all sell well. They very like, well. Can it, can it, we it, talk for a moment about how Square Enix has officially hit rock bottom with regard to the nomenclature, with regard to what they call their fucking game? This is the company that came up. With infinite undiscovery. Let's keep this in mind. All right. That was that was a title. All right. They have officially eclipsed that. As of the Nintendo Switch press conference with, and I quote, Project Octopath Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fucking head trauma award is coming up with the titles at goddamn school? What is an octopath? I don't okay. even know what that is. Is it someone uh, who's whoever it is? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty is, sure. Is it? I think. I think it's some the same person who's in charge of naming the Demu Borger albums. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> hold up. No, no. I I can I can actually I can follow this breadcrumb trail back, which I'm glad Razor Fist brought that up because when it was announced, I went, "The fuck did they just say to me? <laughs> who is, so, who is so, naming their fucking games? A bath you know, from a is naming all the shit for the Kingdom Hearts games." Name that because they're like 352 dash infinite undiscovery odyssey lost um birth by sleep 2.5d hd remixter next so uh yeah there we go that's coming out and it's volume one good stuff <laughs> volume one <laughs> uh, although i will say uh Looks like a badass game, Octopath yeah. Traveler. It looks kind. Really it looks kind of cool, but yeah, like, terrible name. Yeah, it looks like a bit of like an RPG maker kind of thing. You, you get to customize. It was interesting because it's like it's like two point five D ish looking because they got the three D shit and the two D sprites and stuff. And visually, I I know most people will be like, oh yeah, it's just retro shit. One, well, shut the fuck up because there is a such thing as art style. <laughs> I know most people get confused by that. Sorry, yeah. but. Looking, I was like, no, this actually looks pretty fucking badass. Yeah. 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 And, uh, Stupid and, fucking name, but good looking game. Well, and, 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 and I don't want to jump ahead, but if, while we're on the subject of stupid names, a great looking game that I'm very excited to with to dive into with one of the worst names I've ever heard. ARMS. <laughs> ARMS? <laughs> Wait, they kept saying the name, and I'm like, where's the rest of the name? <laughs> They're more like I, I oh like tell me way, it's, tell me it's like you know it's an acronym or something it's short for something but no it's fucking called arms dude there was there was something where they had a listing of shit and when it showed up it was breath of the wild and then they had arms after that it, it was uh, or whatever and it was like it was showing up as wild arms <laughs> and i was like i was having a fucking hemorrhage i was just like <laughs> ah, dude no 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 isn't that the breath of the wild arms you think it's a breath of fire reboot mixed with legend of zelda mixed with wild arms I, I I can already tell you i will fill my fucking home with semen and i will fucking like Take a canoe, and I will go to the store to go get that. 
Yeah, and by the way, Capcom, if you want me to buy a Nintendo Switch, go ahead and make a Breath of Fire game on it. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and... Yeah, I, yeah. I'll buy it. I will buy it. Did you yeah, think I, they didn't know that? I, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So, so, so ARMS... Uh, Arms, yeah, okay. for, for, for those of you who can't tell, and I called it, I knew it, I felt it in my bones. I said, this is the long-lost successor to Teleroboxer from the Virtual Boy. <laughs> now, you don't know that because nine fucking people bought the Virtual Boy, so you wouldn't know that. But Arms is is the long-awaited successor of uh, the of Teleroboxer, a really interesting looking definitely i mean if you for those of you that don't like motion control luckily you don't need to fucking use it so you've got that option this is a game very much uh i think we talked about wii sports earlier in the program uh very much you know um not terribly different aesthetically with the idea of you know extending arms anyway it looks super cool and we didn't get to see a whole lot of it but it's you know did, did you see how they were trying to sell it they, they had the dude and the chick on stage fighting each other, and they were trying to sell it as like, oh my god, this is the battle of the century, and that dude was beating the chick like she stole something. Like he <laughs> oh, was absolutely. Bending absolutely. her like, over his knee and just, oh my god. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, was, it, 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 set, it set women back many years, like, take that, Stephanie McMahon, I'll show you. <laughs> hey, and they you were trying to sell it like... Back. That's payback, because that bitch goes up and she just slaps every wrestler, and then all right. of a sudden, they go from, like, the heavyweight <laughs> strap all the way down to fucking lower mid-card immediately. It's, yeah, it's just like, like what she does with her booking pencil. <laughs> <laughs> well, the writing staff does that, too, so it's... You know. <laughs> well, she's the head of the writing staff, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh. I, so, so wrestling, but... Okay, later, arms, later, later. Uh, here, I'll be I'll be the dickhead about this. I wish that they'd rename arms. Hey, remember when we made Punch Out? Yeah, that that's something. Uh, <laughs> it's no, it's it's Super Punch Out Clay Fighter Edition. <laughs> Dude, I was I was looking at it and I was like, well, that looks pretty fucking fun. I thought it looked like kind of shallow. Not gonna lie, I'd still play it, and I can't imagine paying full price for what I had seen because it reminded me of the Wii Sports boxing, just. Mm -hmm better a lot better but i was looking at like what i will say this i like the art style of it it was as weird. do i as do i, I and again very I much in love with style, right? i think that it should come out cheaper because everything i'd seen of it i'm like well my friends are fucking lazy so i don't know if they're really going to want to go and play this i don't go online so how much fun am i going to get out of this <laughs> hold on dude i'm i'm a lazy fuck how lazy do you have to be to be too lazy to extend your arms? <laughs> you, dude, look, okay, for my friends, the only time they extend have their arms... Have you ever arms... watched anyone play fucking Skyward Sword? <laughs> 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 my friends extend their arms to do Puff Puff Pass. That's all. <laughs> That's it. That's the only fucking time. And, and, and by the way, guys, if you were watching this, you already know that it's fucking true. So fuck off with that. You can bitch at me later. Still, <laughs> it, it's a point. It, I, I was like, I mean, it looks fun. I thought it looked more exciting once they got out of the boxing shit. And I got to see the one person who was just like shooting off rockets from their hands. I'm like, wait, we're going to get ridiculous with this? Yes. Yes. The more ridiculous, the fucking better. So I'm, I want to see more. Like, I'm hoping that the arenas, like, because when they were showing it, it was like a free roam arena. Like, you weren't just stuck on some kind of plane. I'm like, that's cool, because I like arena battling games like that, like Power Stone and shit, and like Air Guys or Air Geese, however you say it. Like, that shit's cool, so I'm hoping that they have, like, crazy-ass arenas. I don't know. It'll be neat. I'll play it. I'm sorry to rain on your parade and bring up Punch Out, but you know. No, no, it's great, and it's definitely you know related to Punch Out. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's an obvious, it's a natural, but you know, it's I think it's you know it it will bring it'll it will bring to the forefront two of my very favorite pastimes. One being the many arenas of Mario Tennis, and B punching ladies <laughs> on stage in front of everybody, just cheating the shit out of them. Lord, oh my God! And it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have seemed so conspicuous if the announcer hadn't been like, "Oh, he's on the ropes." When <laughs> the ropes? that Wasn't dude the... beat her like a narc at a biker rally, he <laughs> kicked the shit out of that chick. 
He, take, <laughs> he takes home the blue ribbon prize as like Chris Brown's face on it, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> him, him, and him and Ray Rice just just walking around, you know, feeling good about themselves. <laughs> and one of the arenas is inside of an elevator, and then shit gets real that? crazy. Oh, How about good, that? Good job. But but arms. I mean, I'll play it. I probably won't buy it at full price though. So that's no, yeah. no. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> The game just makes you wish there was a punch out or a whatever. As long as we're naming old boxing games ready to rumble boxing, something like that. Oh, <laughs> dude, you know what? That series, I felt so bad for it because ready to rumble one and two, good games. After that, they actually made other ones, one of which was on the Wii, and it just, it. <sighs> Poor quality. Poor I'm, su I'm surprised to say, hear you say such nice things of that series. I always thought it was a dog fart. It's, I mean, at the time, I think I was just excited because I played on Dreamcast and there was like yeah. five fucking games on Dreamcast to play. And I was yeah. like, holy oh, shit. The only, that was the game you played because there was nothing to buy for your Dreamcast, basically. Well, and that's, <laughs> that's when you were in a sad state playing a fighting game on the Dreamcast. Hey, Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur and every single 2D fighter that they had on there. I mean, Last Blade 2 is pretty fucking amazing. Yeah. You'll well, I think right. Soul Calibur came out slightly after launch. It wasn't quite a launch title, right? I, I, I got to play, like... Fuck, when did it come out? I, I know it didn't come out at launch, but it was early as fuck. It was very early, yeah. It was very early. I that just remember good. jizzing my pants over to fucking game, because I was like, wow, because that game was fucking pretty. And, and, and as we all sit around, just like, oh, Dreamcast. Oh, fucking Dreamcast. My god. That's not Man. a good sign when we're talking about a new console's launch, is it? <laughs> yeah, we're switching over to Dreamcast and how much semen there is in Pennsylvania. My goodness. Hey, 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 semen was also a good game. Ah? Ah? <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, other the other big releases, well, one that they really tried to push down our throats was Snipper Clips. Which to me seem like very much a cross between Freaky Forms and the Bonsai Barber. If you don't know those games, it's because nobody fucking bought those games, and they figured, yeah, Nintendo Switch, put that shit on there. Um, sort apparently, of a apparently, it's not wise to base a video game around alliteration. No, never. <laughs> All those titles, what the fuck? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And of course, they uh, they teased us with. Um, uh, Shinin Media came out uh, with the third uh, game in the Fast Racing League series, Fast RMX, which totally faked everybody out, and everyone said, holy shit, an F-Zero game, and then seven minutes later, oh, not an F-Zero game. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, so there, there was, uh, this presentation was not without its uh, blue ball segments. Well, there was, uh, so, I, I was pretty excited by, going back to Square Enix, they said Dragon Quest uh, 10 and 11. So that was really awesome to hear. But then they had also said that we'll be getting Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2. Now, that that's an actual, like, bundle package. So you're getting both games together on one card. And I thought that was badass because that's a current-gen game. So it'll be officially completely multi-platform. And a, just an example of, yeah, Nintendo Switch will be getting more than likely plenty of games that the other two systems will be getting. But this one is a combo of both of them. Yeah. And I love the fuck out of Dragon Quest Heroes. Like, and so I, you know, that was one of the things I took away from the conference was Nintendo has kind of lost the Japanese market to Sony in recent years with the Wii U was not as popular. But, like, you look at this conference and they went out of their way to mention JRPG franchises and shit. They, yeah. they did the Dragon Quest thing. They uh, teased Shin Megami Tensei whatever fucking number that is. They uh, dropped the big Xenoblade Chronicles 2 announcement. You know, they actually were kind of... And I imagine that was not an accident. They no, that going... was not an accident because very soon the PS Vitas will be unplayable and those people are going to need to go somewhere. And you'll notice the portable Switch looks a lot like the PS Vita. Yeah. Uh, I I need to I need to go back to the uh, the announcement of the Shimigami Tensei game. Okay, so <laughs> the minute I saw the Atlas logo, I was like, sold. I'll buy it. I'll buy it right now. <laughs> I know. I don't know what it I is. It. I'll buy it. I'll buy the fuck out of it. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm buying this. What is it? I don't even fucking know. Just I'm buying it. And then I saw all the fucking monsters, demons, whatever the fuck you want to go and call them and shit. And I'm like, 
yeah, I sit there and fucking move my erection out of the way, had had perfect fucking view, and I'm like, this is great. And then that was it. <laughs> but they haven't specified anything other than it's a Shin Megami Tensei game. So yeah, yeah. that's that they said it's really early in development. And I, I was like, you know what? Fine. That's absolutely fine. It was it was like a WCW promo. You saw a face and coming soon. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of interesting. Like this did this press conference did it or did it not feel like a little bit of a chance for the developers that couldn't make the show at E3 2016 to be like, hey, we're making games too. We just weren't ready. <laughs> I mean, we, 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 we had we had to move. We had to move. I feel like this is I feel like this press conference was the coming attractions for the next E3. Yeah. They were just like, hey, do you want to see the trailers for what you'll see in a couple months? Here you go. And, you know, I'm I'm completely fine with that. But the, the fact that the RPG genre is being represented in many ways makes a lot of sense. Because Nintendo fans, a lot of them will say, yeah, I love RPGs. Plenty of them do. And that's something that Nintendo was known for, was RPGs. Well, if you If you played Super Nintendo, you fucking know. Yeah. Well, think about it in practical terms. You have a portable console. Not everywhere supports Wi-Fi. You need good, rich, single-player game experiences. What could be more natural than an RPG? Right? So I, I think that's another reason why they're stocking the console with RPGs, because you don't need to be connected to the internet. It's not like some multiplayer bullshit. No, this is something that you could take with you and play on a fucking bullet train or whatever the fuck well it, and it's also nice that they yes, they I'm also have skyrim uh, <laughs> they got skyrim as well because at least there's a western rpg a major one that's yeah. being represented i mean I'll, i'd think it'd be exciting if i got to see diablo 3 get ported and especially considering how much new shit they have coming out for that uh get wasteland 2 on there for shits and giggles because mm. i'm actually a big fan of the original wasteland and I got to play a little bit of my friend's version of it and tinker around with it and fucking adored it. That, that game made me pissed that there's not a console version of the new Shadowrun games. That, you know what? Give it it's time. like the same thing. Give, give it time, man. Shadowrun Returns 1 is fucking awesome. And there's, there's a lot. Like, it wasn't just like a single one. And that's one of those games when people are just like, yeah, Kickstarter sucks. I'm like, no. You sure about that? You sure? And because they're making, and those same guys are making the new BattleTech game. So fucking hell yeah! I hope that like there's a like there's limited run games. If limited run games was like, yeah, we'll fucking pick up Shadowrun Returns, dude. All fucking for that. If I can ever get physical versions of games, you're goddamn Skippy. I want to go and do that. And with this, when uh, when they showed off uh, that Xenoblade Chronicles two, one. I, I was excited about the game, but I have, to, I have to get this off my chest. That main character is so fucking stupid looking. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. It's like he took Sora's pants from Kingdom Hearts and turned them into assless chaps, and then took a fucking, like, old diver's helmet and put it on, but turned it into a hoodie. Like, what no, the no, fuck? It, just, it looked like some fucking brilliantine game designer over at Square Enix was like, you know, I like that Titus from Final Fantasy X, but he's just a little too heterosexual. <laughs> just a little too much. Yeah, he doesn't have the those those booty cut fucking biker shorts on. Yeah, let's and speaking let's of Final Fantasy on. Ten. Am I am I wrong or did they steal Final Fantasy Ten's antagonist too? Yeah, it, dude. It, the fuck, sin. The, fucking. The fuck? just, just coming up. It, well, it's like sin, except for they just like decide to chisel a face onto it, so he's just like not the blob. <laughs> but, but looking at it, was just like, dude, this looks cool. And I like Xenoblade Chronicles and Chronicles X. And it's like, good fucking games. Like, very good. Still not shit compared to Xenogears, but yeah. yeah. Still enjoyed the fuck out of them. They're a lot better than Xenosog, and I can catch hate for that, but I don't give a fuck. It, very, very exciting to see it. I, I just wonder when the fuck that's going to come out. Did they even say anything about a release date for that shit? Uh, no. That one's, yes, yeah, sometime this year. Oh. Woo! Okay, so Lisa. Oh, uh, another RPG which they didn't really have during the press conference, but it's coming out, and we're even getting a, a limited edition of it with a bunch of extra shit. And that's Disgaea Five. Hmm. I haven't played it. I played a one through four. 
But still, Disgaea 5 is going to be on there, and that will be the first time that's been on Nintendo console. The first one was on a handheld, but they've never had them on a console. So Nintendo is getting a lot of first now with third party. That's a big deal when you think about it and something that is easy to overlook is, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, but they're ports. But you're getting companies that you were complaining weren't putting their games on there. Now they are. And that's a good thing. That's a very fucking good thing. And, and I can't if you haven't played it, it's new to you. Out. Uh, that, that'll be on there, and it'll be just as fucked up on there. Yay. <laughs> gotta gotta give it some kind of shit. What 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 other games? Nah. Uh, well, the one that they spent a lot of time talking about when they did a Treehouse Live the next day was Ultra Street Fighter II The Final Challengers, which um, <clears throat> I guess we're coming up on 25 years of Street Fighter. Yeah. And, is, uh, man, I'm, you know... <sighs> It'll be interesting to see them to see Capcom return to more of a like hardcore fighting game mode because they've been courting the casuals so hard with Street Fighter Four and Five and so forth with fucking you know building your ultra meter for getting your ass kicked and shit like I mean they basically when you think about it Street Fighter Four and Five are built around the idea that the harder you get your ass beat. The better you do. <laughs> you know, Here but, you but, go. Here's an ultra combo. You got your ass kicked. It's, ah, it's the, the Stu Hart principle. It's yeah. reflective of modern society, though. And it's like, you came in last place. Don't worry. You get a trophy, too. Exactly. And that's why I don't like the new Street Fighter games. It's, it's not very... Look, I was born and raised on the fucking games that they play in tournaments and shit. I, I attended... Uh, Evo 2006, the West version over at Comic Con that year and shit. I was I would bet in tournaments and shit. I really love Super Turbo in particular and Alpha Three and shit like that. So it's interesting to see them doing something more in that vein again. Uh, and while paying homage, who's making that though? Uh, I uh, didn't. I I saw. I think I saw that Havoc was involved to some degree with it. Well, that's that's the, probably their their engine or whatever. I'm just wondering who the developer is because I know the guys yeah. who made HD Remix were Backbone Entertainment, which was a bunch of like tournament player guys who got together and put HD Remix together, yeah, and that's I, why that I, game turned out so fucking awesome. See, I I don't know who's actually doing the developing, but there is something, and this wasn't shown at the press conference. I I ended up seeing this like a couple weeks back. Uh, Hori who everybody knows as being like the third party uh, peripheral and accessory maker. Uh, they're making a real primo badass looking arcade stick for the Nintendo switch. And that is really good news because one, their shit is top of the line. Yeah. And the idea that we're getting like a big ass fighting game like street fighter on there. And I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that we see Marvel versus Capcom uh, also show up on there because I mean, it's Marvel versus Capcom. I, I need that shit on there. And what I've it'll seen so far made me happy. It'll be interesting to see how Nintendo Switch does at, like, fighting game tournaments and shit. Because if you think about it, it might be, you know, for competitive play, they were mentioning how a lot of multiplayer games and competitive games that are going to be on the Switch, you can just have the two opposing cons uh, screens so that you can't see what the other person's doing, like in shooters and shit. Uh, I think they showed that off briefly on Splatoon, uh, which should be interesting. For like in a competitive sense, it can occasionally be better. Not so much in fighting games, but it can be better when you can't see the other person's screen. Well, that that kind of brings back. I mean, this is a, a very obscure reference, but totally applies to this particular scenario, and that's Nintendo's old versus arcade cabinets, where you sat across from one another and you each had your own screen. Yeah. And you played that way. And obviously that was done so that they didn't have like screens side by side and the cabinet would be absurd looking, but same, same principle. And the idea of that, that's fucking cool as hell. I just, yeah. I hope that like there's more representation on there. I mean, we got uh King of fighters 14. That's out. Uh, we've got guilty gear. That's out. I would love oh, to see we both got of them. later two coming out. Yeah, dude, it, if you put that shit on there, that would be fucking awesome as hell. Because yeah. as far as I know, outside of 
No, there's only one Guilty Gear, one Guilty Gear game that ever made its way onto a Nintendo console, and that was the Wii, and that was uh, was it Guilty Gear X Reload or some shit like that? Uh, I can't fucking remember off the top East of my head or something. I, I forget which one it was, it, but yeah, uh, the, the problem with the Guilty Gear games is a lot of times when they port them to different consoles, they change the name, which makes oh, wait, it even it more was, fucking confusing. Uh, it was Accent Core. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure yeah. it, it was the one uh, they had another version of Soul inside that one but I, I thought that was fucking cool as shit but nobody picked up and, and uh, an actual exclusive Nintendo fighting game from Capcom that got overlooked and it's fucking amazing is uh, Tatsunoku versus Capcom yeah that, that made its way to Nintendo Wii not a single fucking peep out of anybody that shit just blip but it was on the Wii. That was one of the reasons why nobody cared about it because yeah. it, I, I it don't even so think cool. anyone I don't even think they featured that at Evo the year it came out. No, you know, normally because no, Evo is like Capcom's advertising convention at this point. If they come out with a new game, it's gonna be featured headlining that year. Uh, they're not even about like, oh, what's the best tournament game to have here? What has the most interest? No, fuck it. What did Capcom come out with? They're gonna pay us. All right. oh, you know, and uh, when they're not even featuring it, you know, it's it didn't get much of an audience. I got this feeling that they're going to end up doing with like Mario Kart Eight, and they have like some super version. It's got like fucking Game of the Year edition, everything's included with it, and blah blah blah. I think they'll do that with Super Smash Brothers as well, where it includes all the characters that they brought out since then. And if they do something like that, you know, we'll include the likes of like the third party characters like uh, Bayonetta and Cloud and all that shit, like. That uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I mean, fuck it. Yeah. So we we got to talk about the bell of the ball before we go. We have to talk about Breath of the Wild and what we think of that because that was the big one to close out the show. I mean, fuck. Uh, <laughs> who? Okay, who wants to take this one first? Well, um, <clears throat> I think I think the thing that's most obvious is you were moved by the trailer. Don't sit there <laughs> and pretend like you weren't. <laughs> she she's in trouble you gotta go help her you gotta fucking do something you gotta buy this system and help zelda god damn it am i am i crazy or did that trailer have more weeping than dsp after sex oh dear <laughs> well did it have more weeping than dsp talking about his financial situation <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Don't worry, me. we don't have to make it its own separate video where we whine about it, so at least we've <laughs> saved you that trouble, everybody. Uh, and, okay. then, and then other people make videos replying to you, and you make a video whining about the video whining about you whining about your financial situation. That's, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, don't worry, eventually there'll be a video where he's whining about both of us, so <laughs> there'll, there'll be that. But at and least we will look a lot... unboxing right after that. Yes. That, that, that's true. Maybe 15 ads inside the video and it can run for 15 minutes or 50 minutes or no, 15 minutes. No, I was right the first time. Yeah. Fuck it. So, oh. it, but, but, but anyway, on, on to brighter news. Uh, <laughs> so watching this, I was in there with my friend, Alex, we're watching the trailer. No shit. Goosebumps crossed the arm while watching yeah. it because it just, I'll give Nintendo a, a, a lot of shit about certain business decisions that they make, but when it comes to crafting games, especially the Legend of Zelda games, Jesus fucking Christ, it's always just on fucking point. Just yeah. watching it, you like, you, they did it in such a way that it was very, like, it was very cinematic. It wasn't just, we're just going to show you lots of gameplay and shit. Like, this was giving you narrative. This was giving you shit that you haven't seen in other Legend of Zeldas, and you're watching this, and you're just like, holy fuck. Boy, it looks, I, 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 I mean, fuck. fucking I, I, voice I, acting. Oh, yeah. Dude, that. I, I was just like, there's no fucking way. There's no way. Cause I, I'm just taking it for granted that it's not there. I'm just used to that. And now all of a sudden, I'm like, what, what are you, you, you... Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Now I want that. And seeing the the game in action seeing them run around inside this world that is a genuinely like open world game i'm like yeah. i feel it i haven't played the fucking game but i feel like this is going to be one of the best legend of zelda games fucking ever dude they got they got full-blown stealth in it and there's a sound meter that hasn't been in a stealth game since splinter cell chaos theory 
right? Metal Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, which was supposed to have every feature under the sun, didn't have a fucking sound meter, right? Legend of Zelda is a more hardcore stealth game now than fucking Metal Gear Solid. What the fuck? It was. It's so fucking cool. I guarantee you, that's going to be one of those games that ends up using like the HD Rumble shit, like a motherfucker. Like with that kind of shit, while you're creeping up and everything, and the yeah. sound meter going along with that. No, that'll work. And all all the stuff that they had, where uh, I forgot that little tablet thingy that he has. That's like his Swiss Army knife that does tons of different shit. But just seeing all the different stuff that it can do, where a lot of it's like physics, uh, physics-based puzzles. Yeah, and I thought that was kind of cool because with those, it, there's multiple different ways to try to come to the same exact solution, mm-hmm. and that just complements the open-ended nature that this game is trying to go for. Is it's an open world, and they were showing so many different times where it's like there's different ways that everybody can achieve the same thing. Like th- there is an end to the means. How do you want to go and get there? Have at it. Yeah. I, I it, it was, it was interesting too. Uh, we haven't actually seen that many. Pu- Those were the two things that I've noticed. We haven't seen much of, we haven't seen much of the puzzles. We have seen a few physics puzzles, but like they showed some temple gameplay and there wasn't really a whole lot of puzzle action, which was weird. Hmm. And the other thing that I thought was a little strange is we haven't really seen a town yet. Or any like townspeople to talk to, which is a little strange. Um, I'm sure they're in there. Um, I I did see like you. There was some gameplay from uh, was it Polygon? A fucking terrible player on that gameplay. Oh game. man, that was getting ripped apart. Holy shit! These people get paid to play games. But anyways, fucking. But I did see them like they they like, pull up to a. Uh, livery, like a stable or something, and they talk with the guy or whatever. But that w- still wasn't a town. So I'm I'm interested to see some actual gameplay, like within a township. If there's NPCs you can interact with, or you know, oh yeah, no, I RPGs saw some. Stuff. I saw some they did on the uh, the Treehouse Live interaction with. It was sort of a an encampment, you know, sort of a, a shop in the middle of the woods, sort yeah. of thing, and folks around. And yeah, there are NPCs to interact with, and they're you know, of course, uh, dealing with horses and and dogs you know and all that sort of thing you can you can throw something for the dog if you want that's badass well i thought so so i mean that's another thing you're able to capture your own horses which i fucking love that's super cool that's a fucking red red dead somebody played red dead redemption oh (laughs) i i think it's cool that this one and there's always the big debate about is legend of zelda a role-playing game well, this one is going to harken back much more to Zelda 2, not in a bad way, but this one has so many familiar RPG tropes that mm-hmm. are sprinkled in everywhere. And you can tell that they've looked at the like the big boom of Western RPGs over the past, I don't even know how many fucking years now, where they just keep getting better and better, and they're evolving. They're changing the landscape of gaming. And The Legend of Zelda, no matter who the fuck you are, you know that shit's at the forefront. While they're looking at that, they're like, we'll take a cue from that, and we're going to build upon it and do it our way. And they are... It's a natural thing. It happened in music where you had rock and you had blues and then it went over to Britain and Britain turned it into rock and roll and threw it back at us. And then we did hard rock and then they saw it and they threw it back at us as heavy metal, right? You need that kind of byplay between the different uh, gaming cultures to really advance gaming. And for, in recent years, Japan's just been like, oh, that's cool stuff they're doing over there, but we're going to keep marketing to the weebs and the fucking Nihongo files and shit, and we're just going to do a bunch of moe horse shit. Um, but it's it's interesting because Zelda was an original inspiration for a lot of these Western RPG franchises. You know, Zelda was one of those first real open world kind of games, top down albeit, but, you know... Even Zelda 2, with you could go into towns, you could talk to all the townspeople. A lot of people don't realize a lot of that stuff hadn't been done before, or it was just starting to be done in like Ultima and shit like that. But like Zelda was a huge inspiration for all these franchises. So it's interesting to see Zelda in a weird way by looking at Western games getting back to its open world roots. 
in a way. Bizarre that it took them looking at Western franchises to do that, but that's just so I, I completely fucking forgot about this, and it was its own like separate thing from uh, the the presentation. But they they've shown it quite a few times. Did you guys get to see the side by side comparison of uh, the Wii U and the Switch version of Breath of the Wild? I did not. Okay, so they were showing it, and um, the Switch version looks a, a good deal better. I'm not talking like to the point where it's like, oh man, it's night and day, and it'd be ridiculous to even pick up the Wii U version. But the shadowing was a lot better. There was a lot better texture work. And and keep in mind, it wasn't something where you had to squint to see it. This shit was very noticeable. Hmm. Um, off in the distance, you could see that there was a bit more shit going on. Like you could see more trees, you could see a bit more detail over here. And I thought that that was kind of interesting that there was such a contrast between them because I was expecting the same fucking thing. That's all, just the same thing. Yeah. And I, I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if there's going, because they have Mario Kart 8 coming out. And Mario Kart 8 is, it, it's going to have like all the extra shit, which is great. But I'm wondering side by side, is the Switch version going to look a lot better, or at least like no? Yeah, man, better. it's gonna put that one frame back. I mean, dude, it considering that got to see a pretty big difference. I mean, it is possible, and I think Mario Kart Eight is a very beautiful game, so I'm kind of excited about that. And I also consider it like one of the best Mario Karts I've played. Like, period. absolutely, like, absolutely. Um, now it looks like with that game, they've decided that they're gonna fix battle mode. So fuck all those Wii U people, but they're going to fix it on this brand new Nintendo Switch. And uh, that seems interesting. Uh, I, I, I'm not familiar with a lot of the other extra features that are going to make it deluxe. Alpha, did you see anything about that? The only thing that I remember that made it stand out was they have characters from Splatoon in it. and I, I did just, see I, that. I'm safely assuming. I, I don't fucking know off the top of my head or not, but... I'm assuming that all the DLC that they had, because they had what three DLC packs for it or four? Uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, well, they had the DLC packs that included like extra characters and um, stages and all the other shit. Well, I'm I'm just assuming that they're going to be including all of that onto this one. If not, that's really fucking stupid. But well, that's uh, and I can't get a straight answer on that. So we'll, well see. I'm I'm hoping that it'll at least be on there because I never. Ended up getting like uh my my friend ended up getting one of the DLC packs and then that was all, and he never got any other ones. So I never got to try plenty of the extra shit when it came to the original Mario Kart Eight. I've got to play the core game, then the very first DLC pack. That was all. So this would be kind of badass if it did have that and would give a lot of people out there a bit more incentive to pick it up. And let's be honest, the Wii U didn't sell out as much as Nintendo would have wanted to. So there's a lot of people that this might be their first hurrah with Mario Kart 8. So yeah. fuck it, why not? No, Take, like, yeah. Heavy you have these great games on the Wii U that never found the... I mean, look, Mario Kart 8 sold insanely well. It actually sold... <laughs> It's crazy. Nintendo has broken a record the PS4 and Xbox One still haven't broken, which is to sell over 10 million units of a first-party game on their platform. That has not happened on either of the other consoles. They're getting their asses kicked, and they're selling more first-party software. And Mario Kart 8, from what I understand, is the game that did that. But, um, dude, it is Mario interesting. Kart. You got games that a lot of people have not played. Mm -hmm. uh, that you can now port to this console if it finds an audience, and I think it will. I think we all kind of predict, regardless of the various foibles that we're pointing out here, that Nintendo Switch will probably find an audience that the Wii U didn't, just by virtue of having a different brand, at least. Um, it, it well, not only that, is it actually having... The, the Nintendo Switch seems to have commitments to what they claim they had commitments on the Wii U. Day one Wii U was a whole bunch of this and a whole bunch of that, and we're looking forward to working with these people. And all that shit fell apart in a matter of like 10 days. Well, yeah, it was... Well, once those third parties realized, eh, we can't port our fucking PS4 and Xbox One games over to this console, you know, after that, they just kind of, eh, fuck it, not really worth it. You know, it's not going to sell that many copies anyways. So, you know, you'll get Arkham City here and there. You got Deus Ex Human Revolution, the what, Wii U version, and a few other things. But after that, it was like, ah, 
not really worth the fucking hassle. Well, there's there's a lot of potential, and I know that this goes back to like ports and shit, but it could still work. For example, Mario Galaxy One and Two being brought in in HD onto the Nintendo Switch. I would scoop that up without thinking twice about it because I, the only way I've experienced them in high definition is through emulation. But I would like to, in a an actual like official way, because this is going to be. Nintendo... Do you predict that this is going to be a bit of a port machine? Because they you, they made sure to bring that Wii U pad back. They they have it, you know, it's there. The the controllers on the side detach, but it's the same damn thing. I predict they're gonna go back, and you you're gonna be able to play all your Wii U shit. And uh, I I think that it'll be more of a port machine, in a sense that uh, third parties. Yeah, more so than N- Nintendo. Nintendo, I totally see doing it because they'd be brain dead not to. But yeah, there are the a third- whole bunch of classy games that are stuck on the Wii U. There, are, well, imagine this. Imagine if, I mean, I, I think that would be fucking badass if they just had it right out the gate, but uh, the little dock that you put the Nintendo Switch screen, whatever the fuck we call it now, onto there, if they had one that had an attachment that was just like a Wii U disk drive that was attached to it, and then all of a sudden this shit's compatible, or if they just had a version that did that, well, I think about we, about we need ago, to talk we about that. Patents about that. We, we really need to talk about that. Speaking of which, the the it's a cartridge console. It we is. have a cartridge console again. It, and it comes on these tiny... Which is so ridiculous. We've been talking about this for years on this podcast. Why are we still fucking around with discs when they take longer to load and we have all this crazy compression on these little thumb drives? We got gigabytes upon gigabytes upon gigabytes of space on our fucking phones. And they're all contained on this tiny little little card... And now Nintendo is like, you know what? We should probably fucking do that. And so now you have little 3DS size cases for the games and little itty bitty 3DS size cartridges Dude, when, for the games I, themselves. That's badass. What I saw a picture of somebody holding Breath of the Wild on the Switch. It is about the same exact size as a Vita game, and Vita games are fucking microscopic. Vita yeah. games are smaller than stamps. Dude, they are really tiny. And the case, uh, all the cases I've seen for it, um, the the PSP cases, like same fucking thing. Like these I things definitely... are gonna get lost in couches. They're uh, dude, <laughs> like over. seeing it, I was just like, you know what? That's that's kind of badass. But it, yeah. we have we've talked about this shit for fucking years now, on this podcast. Yeah, where we were like, why don't they do that? Because I mean, when I think of the NEC's Turbo Graphics 16, and I'm like, man, PC Engine so fucking badass, and they had the Hue cards, not the fucking Turbo chips. Whoever says that is a fucking idiot. Yeah. But they had the Hue cards. Like those are pretty fucking cool. Master System also had them. I'm like, that's neat. You know, they're a lot like SD cards, but just like bigger. Imagine if we took micro SD cards, which go up to like 128 gigabytes and shit. And you had that, you wouldn't have to do fucking mandatory installs. You're skipping past like virtually all things of loading, uh, assuming that you can go and access the memory and all that shit fast. And it's a modern console, so it can. Yeah, and, like, and it doesn't have to sound like a fucking jetliner starting up when your goddamn console starts. Dude, that I, I can't even tell you the amount of times that like disc based systems love them to death because there's lots of cool games on them. But the sounds that they make at times, I'm expecting it to just suddenly go, go <laughs> like smoke comes billowing out the back and I have to get out the fucking hand crank and just knock them on. Like it's fucking bad, but and right before the-, the explosion, for some reason you hear <laughs> very odd, very odd. <laughs> on a hot bar. B- bunch of Nintendo switches and, and they're like, well, I get all my virgins, not the ones that you were hoping for. <laughs> Wrong yeah, industry. You attract a lot one. of virgins. You're, you're actually but not wrong. It, I like this I analog. It, it was it, it was pretty fucking neat to see that you know the rumors were quite true about that that it was a, a hand it was going to be a portable console that it had the detachable fucking uh, little uh, controllers on it and it was cartridge based. 
and seeing them just like there's there's a lot of a lot of shit with this that are big time positives yeah that well there's look objectively this is one area where we can talk about oh it's just a wii u with slightly better hardware blah 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 and there are ways in which it's technologically inferior whatever this is one way where nin the nintendo switch has objectively technologically jumped over the competition this is just flat out. This is what Xbox One and PS4 should be doing. They should be using SD cards. They should be using, because it's faster loading times, whatever. But of course, Microsoft and certainly Sony, who own the Blu-ray brand, mm -hmm. they've got contracts with fucking Blu-ray. Yes. They have to print their games on that shit. And so they're kind of hamstrung by this. But this is pretty fucking cool. And First, not to know. mention the motherfuckers sending out discs that just have a single unlock code on them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, but 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 po positive thinking, positive vibes. Positive, positive thinking, yeah. That's garbage and horse shit. However, <laughs> I like that they're going in this direction because it fits with the whole portability thing. Like... Can you imagine them trying to pull the old PSP thing where they go with their own fucking disc-based format on a portable system? It would make no sense. They would have to completely opt out of physical media altogether and just go digital only. If Nintendo went digital only with this system, there would be a lot of fucking pissed off people everywhere. Yeah. And, and granted, I still think that it would still sell and people would still go and buy the shit. But there's a lot of people who would also just get up and walk the fuck away permanently. Yeah, without turning back. Yeah, because um, they can deal with that bullshit on their phone. Oh, and and we got we got one one more game to get out of the way before we even get into anything else. Super Mario fucking goddamn. Well, I'll Odyssey. say before we get Super Mario Odyssey, we didn't talk about Sonic Mania, and apparently nobody else wanted to talk about it either. Yeah, apparently oh. they didn't want to at the conference. I I think it's probably pretty early in development is what's going on there. But, That's you know, awesome. as I said before, this is clearly a machine, you know, aimed squarely at people 25 through 39 yeah. who are about to have families of their own. And I have to admit, I was excited. I yeah. They didn't say very much about no, it. And that's it why I, I think they should have at least at least give us like a pre-rendered trailer or something, you know, for something. Sonic. They really should have talked about Wait, that. for for Sonic Mania? Because the, there's been footage of that all over the place for months. Oh, no, no, I, I know what you're talking about, but you know what I mean? Like, when but they... During the conference, it just... Oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. I, th I thought... I'm sorry. I thought you guys were just like, I haven't seen it, and it's a new game. I'm like, no, no, no. no so dude, Sonic Mania is ideal for the Nintendo platform. Mm -hmm. Like, perfect like like a glove like the watching all the footage for it that i've seen i i'm more and more excited to play the game like i genuinely am it's it's a straight up 2d sonic the hedgehog game done by fans who were making sonic rom hacks on an expert level that should be working for the company sega saw this and decided to employ them. Something that I've Imagine been saying that. for fucking years. You see these talented motherfuckers out there, quit giving them the fucking finger, employ their fucking skill set, and use it. You realize it's cheaper to hire them than it is to sue them. It's true. Like, holy fuck, man. Like, it makes so much more sense. And there's also, we've got another Sonic game coming out. And, oh, granted, we've seen no footage of it whatsoever, but the people that did Sonic Generations and Sonic Hellers are working on this, so that should more than likely end up... No, 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 um, that's being... the one I was actually talking about, the one they should have at least shown a pre-rendered trailer or something of. Yeah, Because you, you have the Sega guy come out there and stand in front of a Sega logo like an asshole, and he doesn't <laughs> even show anything. He's just like, we look forward to working on your console. <laughs> <laughs> that was the theme of the night, by the way. Full keep this looking at his phone, ordering sashimi. He's like, I gotta get the fuck Dude. out of here. <laughs> walking, walking backwards and bowing <laughs> while the lights go off. At yes, the wrong yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry, and and the lights are just going off at the wrong time. He's like, God damn it, and the camera's panning at the wrong time. Clusterfuck. Oh, uh, but we could. Can we blame that on the translator too? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> so, so real. Why? Why did? Why did they have that translator? Like, who the fuck 
hired him because at some point you have to be like, okay, well, uh, let's see your resume. That dude was a a fucking stuttering mess, dude, from was, start to god. Ridiculous. Thing. The most ridiculous part was you had another translator who was competent, and he was narrating over other stuff, and they specifically swapped out the good guy. <laughs> to hand it oh. over to the DJ from Fallout 4. <laughs> what the, Dude, what's wrong with you? It, it, oh, look, I'm excited when Suda51 comes out for anything. And when I can't maintain my focus for a game that I'm really interested in, because I'm like, Jesus Christ, you were like the fucking goddamn Dudley boys when they first started out. And Bubba Ray had the fucking stuttering thing going on. I'm just like, well, you fucking say what you need to say, you fucking buffoon. If they did not murder that motherfucker, I'm the goddamn queen of England. Because you, you see the fucking president of Nintendo. Does he look like he takes shit from anything or anyone? No. no. Like, he's clearly the head of some fucking Yakuza organization, which, by the way, can we please get the fucking games on the Switch? But still, no more Heroes 3. Like, Oh man, it just it it, it seriously just set my it was a bit of a fart. I mean, I know you're a Suda Fifty One fan, but it was a bit of a fart anyway. He was like, "Here, have a JPEG." Yeah, that's <laughs> dude. I I felt the same way afterwards. I was like, "Really? Nothing? Did you just bring out a lot of guys just to say we're making stuff?" Is that what we're doing? Because <laughs> like, I, I think we wouldn't believe them. Like, we have other people making games. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Like, well. I mean, anything, but like, no, nah, man. I mean, look at Travis Touchdown. Looks yeah. like a bad motherfucker, right? Like, of course, you know, I don't know. Maybe they looked at the Star Citizen model. Hey, here's a picture. Give me $90. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> you know, this, it does like, work out. So that's, that, that, that's a thing. But <laughs> the, it, it just, like, it fucking bugged me. And I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm like, you know what? Can we just... Can we get lollipop chains on Shadows of the Dam and just get like a, a second second coming of them because both those are really good games and they deserve more attention, especially Shadows of the Dam. Lollipop Chainsaw is like it's got its problems, but it's a fun fucking game. Shadows of the Dam is fucking phenomenal and totally should be ported. I'd be all for that, like Shadows of the Dam, uh, big boner edition. It makes sense if you play the game. No, it's not me just making like metaphors and shit. Trust me. But still, giant, yeah. Giant you know. yeah. God. Bad, bad translations aside. And, and can can I ask you guys, why the fuck do we got 32 gigabytes for storage again? Well, actually, wasn't it more than that? I, I remember watching the IGN hands-on afterward, and they mentioned something like 130-something gigabytes of storage. No. Nope. Oh, well, it, I know it's... it's uh, Well, you're free to use your own SD high-capacity SD card. So you can you're open to expand. You can use whatever you want. That part I understand. Thirty two is baseline memory. Hopefully there's no some sort of bullshit limitation around that, like the uh, the uh, Nintendo DSi, where well, it depends you, on the SD card slot thingy that right. they have, because some of them will only accept an SD card that goes up to so much. Mm -hmm. After that's like oh nope 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 can't do it can't do it now. For this, I imagine at the minimum, it should go up to 128 gigabytes, minimum. So right. that's not that bad. And that's 128 on top of the 32 that they've already got. The thing that just doesn't make sense to me is 32 gigabytes in 2006 was unacceptable. How the fuck is it 2017 and we're still rocking that? And I had people try to go and argue me, well, I mean, do you really need it? They're not installing the games. And I said, did you ever think about the entire digital marketplace? You know it exists. Yeah. So, Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Alfred, are you expecting there's going to be games on the eShop? What are you, out of your mind? <laughs> I, I, I'm Do you think the virtual console is going to have games to play? No, fuck you. You're going you're gonna to watch Pikmin movies and like it. I, I, well, what? I do like Wasn't, it. you know, a factor yeah. here also is we brought back cartridges now. Are they going to have storage capacity on them? That might save a bit of space. I don't know. But yeah, uh, the fact that you can swap out for your own SD card kind of makes it a non-factor to me because SD cards are so damn cheap. See, <laughs> SD cards are extremely cheap, but the same exact argument I can make for consoles where if I want to go and bump up the hard drive space, I can do that 
for a, a pretty low price because hard drives cost like fuck all now, which is really nice. Because, and I mean, at minimum though, minimum right now, 500 gigabytes. When you're handed 32 gigabytes, it seems like you're kind of just being given a shaft. And I, I, I'd folks say, well, it's portable. I mean, do you think they could really fit more in there? So I pulled up pictures of micro SD cards. And I was like, no, no, I don't think that. Gosh, it'll take up so much fu you fucking idiot. Right onto Jericho's fucking list. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, quit just saying, I accept less. And I'm going to tell everybody less is better. Like well, that, the, the, the real when you really break it down and look at the whole thing, as we've talked about, we've brought up at least a half a dozen times on the program already. Is it seems like they had to do whatever they could to make a nickel somewhere on this fucking thing. Well, that's somewhere that's what we're talking about before is with them cutting corners. Which, granted, I'm glad that it's got expandable storage. So, like Razorfish said, it's a non-issue. That's really the truth. So long as I can bump up the space on it, I'm fine. But one thing that I can't fix. And this is just the way it is. And yes, 2004 is going to come a knocking because 720p is back and in full effect. We have phones that are rocking four fucking K resolutions right now, but we have a screen on a soon to be current gen system that's 720p. When you were selling this as a portable system and we're playing high quality, very premium games. And it's a bigger That's screen. Crazy. Yeah, a bigger <laughs> screen. Keep in mind that on your phone, your, your phone screen is probably going to be about half the size of what you see on a Nintendo Switch. A 720p screen, and I know, well, you won't notice all the fucking differences. I've held tablets. I've held laptops, all sorts of portable devices where it was resolutions of this all the way up to this. And I noticed a fucking difference, including on things that didn't take advantage of any anything that was like, oh my god, them graphicals. I just think that it was fucking shitty. I mean, it, it, to me, that that was like unacceptable. Like, 720p, really fucking really. It just and and the Wii U had like a made up resolution. It was like 800 by something else. I was like, what the what the fuck is that? It's so weird, but yeah. It's something still going to accept it. I've heard plenty of people said that they've looked at the screen. They didn't think it was all that bad, but. I still would have been much happier with a fucking 1080p screen or them just go all out. Give me like something that's like closer to 2K. That'd as be as would everybody has. You, you were the one saying we need to keep on a positive note. Positive, 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 positive. Yeah, I know. But don't forget, and also something that a lot of people doubted, NBA 2K18 is actually coming to the Nintendo Switch, which a lot of people doubted. So that's cool. I don't and, give a fuck. But the point is, it'll be there. We, we've hmm? got to wait. Oh, wait, no. Is it FIFA or uh, Pez? Yeah, it's FIFA. It's FIFA. Okay, so we have that coming out, and they had that one dude come out that was eleven foot tall, <laughs> and then and then you got Japanese dudes with him that basically like they look like little Yodas and shit. No, it was, it was actually it was actually an American guy, and he looked way too happy to be translating for him. Dude, way uh, too happy. You're right. Yeah, he was he was very fucking upbeat. If he did not bump a couple lines before all this or was promised to be able to bump a couple off a couple of geisha titties, <laughs> I don't really know. Either way, that sounds like a great fucking evening. But still, yeah, it, just seeing them together, I was just like, this is adorable. Can, can we get a game about those guys instead of milking <laughs> teeth? Like, I want to see what, what do adventures they, they do. Do lines like, in Japan? What are, don't they just, like, freebase Godzilla semen or... I, I mean, they might. No, might. they go to. They go. They go. They go. Um, they just drink the water. <laughs> Dude, I, I, like to, I like to think that the gigantic menacing man has like a kangaroo pouch, and he puts the translator in there, and they walk around together. That's how he orders food. Since he's <laughs> high, and everybody's this high. God, that sounds so fucking awesome. It's like Voltron, but lazier. There's only two. <laughs> so, so so yeah, but I, I'm sorry. So I got that shit out of my system. So, yeah. It, 720p screen, 32 gigabytes. I had to, I had to fucking say something about. It. Yeah, our, well, what's every final, now and again. What's our final verdict? What, do, what do we think? Well, we got, we got, we got to do Mario Odyssey real quick, and then we'll get okay. out of here. Um, how about that Mario Odyssey? That's, that's, they, okay. Super Mario 64 was in 1996, and as we talked about, people who were little kids in 1996 who lost their fucking mind over Super Mario 64 now have children of their own. And it's, how, how, how about that? How about that? And 
this is it looks great it <laughs> I, I i don't want to come off as a fanboy but holy shit it looks great it, it looks like a lot of fun i um it's the first open world mario game since forever you know and, and it looks like a real kind of sandboxy type of game that's how it's being described by people working on it which is yeah. pretty crazy you're gonna have like a full-blown hub world kind of like you know galaxy whatever or uh, or mario 64 i mean it, it looks like a more open-ended mario and we had bowser look like a cross between liberace and david bowie kidnapping princess peach and i was all how can you go wrong like, dude it, uh, no that's that's fucking oh, oh, and he's not even he's not just kidnapping her to piss off mario anymore he wants to get in it he's gonna get married okay. to her yeah it, I thought that was kind of cool that he's like, no, nah, I mean, I'm going to bang your bitch. Like, I'm not fucking kidding. All that fucking shit that people have been talking the whole time, it's happening. I'm going to take this big fucking Koopa dick. I'm going to stick it right in her goddamn Princess Toadstool warp pipe. Just right in there. And it, it to me, that's fucking great. I, I've dreamt for about that numerous different times. Yes, I, I really have. I, but, I don't want to know how moist those dreams were. Oh no! You should see the mattress. I threw that thing out. It was. It was. <laughs> Princess uh, Peach is gonna do this big fucking heel turn, like sensational Sherry with the cat makeup and shit, and fucking dude, she's gonna be all evil. I would. I would love for Mario to like the the big the, what the twist. He shows up and he goes to save her, and then right as he's about to like defeat Bowser, she comes up and she just hits him from behind. And I'm like, oh shit! And then all of a sudden, like it, it just everything goes to hell. That would be one of the coolest fucking swerves ever. And then it's like <laughs> Princess Peach, and then Mario has to like, I, I don't know, get he could bang that one bitch from Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good idea. She's way fucking hotter anyway. But okay, Odyssey looks awesome. So that's that's what I, I guess I should talk <laughs> about the game. Uh, so Mario running around. This is like Mario's time machine. Like or no, uh, Luigi, what is it? Uh, Mario's missing. That's yeah. what it's like. Mm -hmm. uh, dude, what the fuck? Seeing Mario in a world running around with like normal people, and it's like cartoon Mario. If you if you remember uh, Superman on NES, like <laughs> Superman's this big, and everybody's this big, and and that's what it reminded me. I'm like, what the fuck's happening? Like this is scary. <laughs> and and uh, was it New Donk City? That. That's going to be on Pornhub <laughs> everywhere. I want to star in New Donk City. Like, oh, man, does expand Dong indeed. Like, it was so fucking awesome. It, all the worlds look cool. Like, holy shit. I want to play this so fucking much. It looks it's, great. You know, you know the multicultural SJW fagaloons, though, with the fucking Mexico place. He, he's going on his world tour, and it's like one gigantic sombrero with... <laughs> I thought I thought it was Samba de Amigos. I I was just I was expecting like them to bring back like Chi Chi's and shit, or just like you know they they have like adverts for like Chipotle in there, just like yeah. fuck it. I mean it's a it's, it's a mer Mario jumps over the wall, you know. Yeah. He's gonna, it's gonna you're gonna see a bunch of like little Goombas that are extra brown, and they've got oh, like dude. 19 Goomba kids. All I want for there is they take that one meme of the dude sprinkling the shit and they get Donald Trump sprinkling that fucking cinder blocks and shit building up the wall. Um, Mario <laughs> tries to get over it. And, uh, do, 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 do. Like poor fucking bastard didn't make it over. But see, the, the social justice warriors won't be able to attack it because technically that'd be like attacking the cartoon version of Italy. So and they don't want to do that because then they're going after like another group of minorities that isn't really a minority, but it's easy to throw shit back at them. So yeah, like, oh. I mean, but that's basically you. That's basically a preview of the entire game. You're probably going to go to France and a dude's going to be eating a baguette with a beret on and he's going to be using a white flag as a bib. Like, it's going to be <laughs> amazing, folks. I can't wait for this game. I can't Dude, believe I you can't didn't. Wait. You didn't say the obvious. He's going to be an anthropomorphic frog. <laughs> well, and, well, and probably that too. We can go to Africa, and then all the shit that people complained about in Resident Evil 5 can suddenly be recycled and reused again. They just, like, erase one thing and put Super Mario Odyssey right there. Yes. Look at that! 
and, and then Jesse Jackson comes out because that's the only time he comes out, and everything just oh, it, it's a fucking. Is, ladies and show. gentlemen, this this is how the Hate Bit Podcast celebrates Martin Luther King Day. By the way, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're gonna talk about Mario in in darkest Africa with a bunch of Goombas and grass skirts furiously clicking their tongues in unison. It's gonna no, be the, fantastic. And and don't forget about the Fagaloon remark. Yeah. Well, yeah. the the truth of the matter is everybody is hyper fucking sensitive to things for a living now. So this it's just one of the things all we're doing is predicting the obvious because you know, people want to go and complain and especially about shit that isn't an issue, but they make into a fucking issue. It's going to be a fun super Mario game. Regardless, like seeing Mario run through actual streets and doing flips on street lights and jump around shit while there's like actual traffic. I was like, I was so fucking happy. Like I haven't been this excited about a 3d Mario game in a long ass time because most of them have been like new super Mario brothers or super Mario 3d world where it's like I isometric camera angled 3d. This is the first fully 3d Mario game that we've gotten since sunshine. Yeah. yeah Think about totally. that. And sunshine was kind of meh. In terms of like a Mario, and not horrible, but by Mario standards, just eh. But this, I think, will be my most hyped since Super Mario 64. Honest fucking truth. And it's it's weird to think like this system is going to be giving me two main franchises from Nintendo that I'm most hyped about for a long ass time oh. for those individual franchises. In its first year. Yeah, and people and people who are like, why is he in the real world with like human beings and blah blah? It's like, bitches keep forgetting this. This nigga's a plumber. This man needs to make a paycheck. You know, this yeah. is why do you think he's going down pipes and shit? He's a plumber, fucking. Well, dude, it, if you look, uh, he's on like the little cosmic boat thingy that he's flying through space on, and it had a little globe on it. I think that this thing is like dimension hopping. No fucking yeah. joke. Like this is basically like his version of a TARDIS or some shit, minus the <laughs> dimension hopping, but. Like, he's just going around wherever the fuck he wants. And it's Mario. If anybody reads really deep into a Super Mario game, you need beat with a fucking belt. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, it's a Super Mario game. You know what you're supposed to do? You pick up a fucking controller and have a lot of fun, because they're all fun. Just, just have but, fun. Yes, yes, yes. Mario, Mario's hopping around in a Goomba boot, but what does it all mean? Yeah, <laughs> What are the means Freudian it, underpinnings of the Goomba boot? It means it's a great fucking time, and you get to smash taxi cabs. And I don't care who you are, you know you want to smash a taxi cab. So, that's it. Super Mario Odyssey Holiday 2017. Buy it or don't. That's it for the Hate Bit Podcast. Thank you very much. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Joining me today was the man, the myth, Alpha Omega Sin. Um... I, I pre-ordered the Nintendo Switch, even though I talk shit on it. I guess it. I can only hate or love something, because there is no in-between. Oh. <laughs> and there we are. And the man with the shiniest glasses in the United States of America, Razor Fist. I have a dream that my consoles will not be judged by the quality of their peripherals, <laughs> but by the content of their game libraries. God fucking speed. And that'll do it. And don't forget, Nintendo Switch, this March, save your fucking dollars. You're going to need them. See you next week. Good night. Too sweet. <laughs>